talking about flashing lights, baby. Flashing lights everywhere. Niggas was saying shit about me, they didn't even fucking know me. This is my school. This is what I was doing with what nobody looked. Y'all don't know what goes on in practice or the locker room. Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! We a little late today. We on black people time. You already know what it is. But we here, and that's the no, most they, important they, thing. No, the, the time went up. That, that hour change got Yeah, that, that's, that's it. That daylight. They, that did, daylight they, did, they did minutes, too. They did minutes, too. <laughs> we had to add a few extra minutes to it. But this is Gil's Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy back with the legend Gilbert Arenas. What it do? Shout out to Wash Dads. Mm -hmm. They got some great gear. We are superheroes every day. Okay. It's an acronym, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We got Lexi Brown back with us in Canon. A day older, a day colder. Had a little mishap yesterday, but Cannon. got it taken care of. <laughs> he might not last the show today. And we got our resident Victor Wimbayama fan, Rashad McKess, in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I know what we do. I know what it is. I know what we do. Here's what we got cooking in the arena today. Uh, Harder made his debut Monday night, but how long will the beard need to get comfortable with his new Clippers teammates? Anthony Edwards has the Timberwolves on the prowl, but is Ant-Man ready to take a leap to superstar this season? And will LeBron be the same player if he never played for the Heat? Ooh. Mm. He has some interesting comments to say about that. But before we get into all that, as always, this show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Download the app. Use promo code GILL. They will match your first deposit up to $500. Uh -uh. 100 they changed it. They changed it back to 100 yeah. Changed it back to 100 mm. Mm. Damn. Too late. Huh? Slow feet don't eat. Slow feet don't eat. I think so. I think so. I, I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you in that door where you get the extra information. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Better get there. <laughs> get your level up. <laughs> Gil, Gil, uh, we have some breaking news, Gil. Uh -huh. We just communicated with the folks over Underdog. They're saying that, that they're changing it back to 100 at the end of the week. So everybody who hasn't Damn. downloaded the app and Damn. used promo code Gil on Underdog Fantasy, you can still get a $500 deposit match through the end of the week. Gil was out here capping. Damn. Get your I, bread right. To be honest, I didn't read the whole thing. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just seemed like back to 100. So you got to the end of the week. If I were you, I'd make my next move my best move and go ahead and download the Underdog Fantasy app. They keep this show on the air for y'all, and we need them first-time depositors, all right? I'm going to keep it real. So, hey, so I see. Hey, yo, go down with the kicks. Yo. The, the G-A's. Uh, Gil, you gave me a bunch of As you know, I'm a simple man. Game. They ain't dollar. Chad's been packing me up, so it was a good time okay. to remind them that they're broke. <laughs> well, nice Damn. little fit today. You like that, huh? You yeah. want some. I know you want some. I like the Sold like out. The damn dollar collab. <laughs> Thanks, Gil. <laughs> Thank you. As always, we do mostly fans at the end of the show. Go ahead, drop a good question in the chat. Include your underdog username. There we go. And we'll match your, we'll give you a $50 bonus. <laughs> This music be getting me in the mood. Uh, if you send a video question to mostlyfansgill at gmail.com and we use it on the show, and you include your underdog username, you get $100. So you can download that, get 500 send a good question to the, <laughs> what I do now? What kind of mood you talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, I know. That mostly what, fans. I know, but what mood? <laughs> what? The Next mood? Time. The <laughs> Excuse me? Okay. Uh, here we Excuse go. Excuse me? Saying. Here we go. Get you in the what? <laughs> yeah, we'll let you finish, though. Go ahead. You go special, ahead and, you special ahead work. You go ahead and finish, though. Franchise tagging the work. <laughs> And you can't watch this. Oh, yeah, that one. In the mood funny. with no socks. No socks. Okay. Man, you tripping, man. It's my look, okay? It's my thing. <laughs> uh, uh, and if you can't watch the show live with us, you can get audio versions of the show on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your podcast from. I would watch the show on YouTube and listen to the audio version. Two bags. All right, well, let's get into it. Uh, Gil, your former teammate, uh, Brendan Haywood, made some interesting comments uh, during the pregame show. Before, 
the LSU Colorado game about Angel oh. Reese uh, and her NIL value compared to her earning potential in the WBA. Being a star is about more than just doing it yes. on the court. When you have that personality and people want to see you, whether they want to hate on you or whether they want to cheer for True. you, that star factor is there. You brought up NIL money. She's yeah. getting a boat loader. She's getting a boat loader. And she's going to have to take a pay cut when she goes to the WNBA. Oh, that's serious. Seriously. Uh, so, Lex, you quote tweeted the video, said, don't let them cover the women's basketball anymore. <laughs> Thanks with the heart. The hand heart. The hand heart. So what did you think about <laughs> those comments? I, well, one, I've never seen him cover women's basketball before, for one. Serious? Serious. I've never seen it. Mm. So, um, I just feel like in that moment, he had the opportunity to provide some, like, real legitimate insight about basketball. And then he just went to haters and money. And then it's just, like, a pay cut. Like, she still might have a whole nother season. Like, why are we even talking about things like that? And I just feel like... People are failing to understand the difference between an endorsement and a salary. Mm -hmm. mm. Talk about it then. It's college basketball players. Can you break no, it down for They them? have no salary. And I wish in that moment, one of those ladies that were sitting next to him, I think they were caught off guard when he said that. But people, I mean, obviously, WNBA players, yes, we need higher salaries. We know that. That's something that we've been fighting for since the WNBA started. But for them to continue to use this NIL warped logic to continue to like just shit on the w is like odd because we make a salary additional and then we additionally have endorsements on top of the salary whereas these college players have no salary but endorsements so for them to say that they're going to take a pay cut that just means that you you maybe you don't think that when she gets to the next level she's going to get these same endorsements for whatever reason that is but i feel like if you're a good enough player the endorsements are going to follow you and now you also have a salary but we should also note that Renee Montgomery was on the panel with Brandon. She's the owner with the Atlanta Dream. Yeah. And like you said, you felt like she was caught off guard by those. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you heard her little laugh. It was like a little awkward. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> dude, what, why did you say that? I mean, I think she is one of our biggest advocates for the W. So, I mean, I was a little disappointed that she in that moment she wasn't, she wasn't like, uh-uh. But I feel like they kind of had to like reel it back in because that conversation could have... Yeah. You know, hold up, wait up, man. <laughs> no, <I'm just> like, <laughs> that conversation now, could have went somewhere but else. I, um, NIL, I think everyone is confused with NIL. Yes. Like people, parents, <laughs> I know, trust me, I'm, I'm on the side. Mm -hmm. They think NIL is coming from the actual school. Like they're going to the school and say, hey, give us money. Well, some, I mean, some schools are giving money. Not yeah, all of them. Yeah, but they're getting it from sponsors and right. delegating it to... Exactly. And that's how the schools try to combat it because it's a player who goes out and use their likeness, their name and likeness, for endorsements. Right. Right? So what the school decided to do is for everyone else who won't get money, right? Mm -hmm. They can do like little functions. Oh, we're going to do this at this event and we're going to cut all you guys a check. 5000 5000 Ten thousand, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. And some of these, some of these parents don't really understand that it's your likeness. So, mm -hmm. however your social media is, that's how you can go out there right. and, get, and get the extra and stuff. get that extra stuff. So, you're right. He's wrong. That when she gets to the W, those endorsements follows the. Um, what endorsement she has? She has Reebok. Reebok, something with the Rock. Mm -hmm. All that stuff just travels, and yeah. I, didn't, I don't think they understood that. No, and I don't think anybody understands that, and I don't know why it, nobody has, like, corrected it. Yeah. Like, on, in these settings, like, I think that would have that been the perfect moment to be like, at eh, endorsements, salary, separate. And I think last week, LSU, the, pay, the team had, like, retweeted something about Aaliyah Boston's salary or whatever, and Aaliyah Boston was just like, Stop bringing me, like, y'all don't know how much my checks is clearing. Like, y'all don't know how much money I'm making. I mean, she said it in, like, the classy mm -hmm. way because she's a classy girl. Like, the pocket watching is crazy. What's the unclassy way to say it? Get out my pocket. Get out mm -hmm. my pockets. Here's okay, my, boy. this is what I'm doing. It's like, I know her, her Adidas endorsement is insane. Like, and she deserves it, but she's not walking around like, this is how much money I'm making because why, why do we have to do that? 
So when you talk about NIL, and I think the thing a lot of people get confused with, we see these evalu evaluations, you know, you got Angel, multi-million dollar Flaugé, players like seven. that. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but the reality is that most players aren't seeing bags from these NIL. I talked to a lot of college athletes, because I was under the impression, oh, you know, you're coming in and they're taking care of you. A lot of them are like, mm -hmm. shit, some, some people get it. We're not, like, like that sounds good, yeah. but we're not getting it. But let's talk about the other side of it, because we've, we've sat here on the show before we had Cheryl Swoops as well, and you've talked about just how hard it is to make a WNBA roster. Right. We've seen first-round picks get cut before the season starts. So is it beneficial to women like Angel Reese to stay in college because now they can exploit those NIL deals with collectives like LSU has versus now coming to the league? You said she could bring those sponsor deals with her, but you actually got to be in the W mm -hmm. for those deals to follow you. Yeah, right? so. I mean, I've always said that girls should stay in college as long as they can, even before NIL maximizing your education, now you can maximize your money. But yeah, the whole core of it is being a, an athlete. So if you're not an athlete anymore, then the deals aren't gonna come. But it's like, people are like, well, she can stay in college or she can take a pay cut, but like the eligibility is gonna run out. Like mm -hmm. she has to leave at some point. They all have to leave at some point. But if you are gonna stay, you need to like be killing everybody because then your value as a player is gonna go down, which that's ultimately the important part. So if you're gonna stay all them years, you have to be at the top of your game at all times. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a fifth year senior. I mean, I was ready to go, but sure. I was looking at the freshman trying to guard me like, you can't <laughs> guard me like you're 18, I'm 23, like time to go, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk about from the, the W side of it. You've gotta spend, I think, four years in college or be over 22 years old to mm -hmm. be eligible to go to the WNBA. League is expanding. You know, we were talking on the couch yesterday. You said the game should be longer. It seems like the, the roster should also expand as well. But what's the solution to this problem of NIL money versus number of available WNBA roster spots once you get to that next level to be able to take yeah. those brands, hopefully, with you when you go to the league? I mean, I think the problem right now is they have that COVID year, so they're, like, choosing to stay, when in reality, that's, that's not how it goes. You have four years of eligibility, and then you go. So I think... This, this senior class, if they choose to come out, this is going to be like the first group of NIL, like a big group of mm -hmm. NIL kids to see how it translates to the pro level because there's nothing, there's nothing that we can compare it to because we didn't have NIL. So we don't know if it's going to translate or not because it's never happened before. I mean, Zaya is my teammate. You know, her endorsements came with her. She was doing great in L.A., Aaliyah, Boston. Her endorsements went with her in Indiana. So, so far, it's translating if you do what you're supposed to do on the court. But again, this I'm a stay, I'm a go. Like that's not that's not reality because the COVID year is done. So now you have your four years of eligibility, then you got to get out. So just so people know about the NILs, I think number fifteen on the NIL list is seventy eight thousand. So out of all the girls in college, yeah, seventy eight thousand, and just so we understand that has nothing to do with your game, it's if you can sell product. It's about, yeah. NIL is about can you sell? So yeah. the top two players is Reese and Flojay, mm -hmm. right? And, the and, they're both in the, and they're both in a million, and then the best player in the country is at 700,000. So Flojay makes half, more than half, or I'm um, shit, double. double. Then the best double. player in the country. The best player in the country, because the best player in the country has no personality. So how are you gonna sell the product? She's in Iowa, yep. <laughs> just saying, you know, I mean, personality. Like, the personality. <laughs> sell these shoes. Okay. Hey. <laughs> but hey, they love, they love her out in Iowa, man, so. Yeah. Should I see you here in deep thought, just? I'm soaking it all in Just, right now, just taking know? it off. Just soaking it, you know, I love the, the energy from. Is it Gil for to be right all in it at Louisville mm -hmm. with his daughter, so. I, I, he can I, give us a lot of insight. We get the bad Gil or what? I personally think that, um. You have to you have to change it. Like you have to change the structure. The structure's been the same way for the last thirty something years and it hasn't evolved. So the the last thirty years has shown us that this is not how it works. Right? You know, four years in college and and going overseas and it hasn't worked. So there needs to be four or five new teams, right? One and done or straight out of high school. Let all these young girls come in and change the way the game is being played, right? The way the game is being played, it's dinosaurish from the standpoint of how the 
play calls. Your, you know, your, your, it's too many plays and let their celebrityism from high school follow them into the W. So that means their whole fan base is going to follow. Um, college, is, college fans are college fans, mm -hmm. yep. right? You know, yep. like Duke, a Duke fan is a Duke fan. Yep. Right. He's not a, you leave and then I follow you. No, he's, it's, he stays there. Yep. So what ends up happening is all these college or these high school kids, they can't bring their fandom with them. So they lose their fandom and then just, just get a city. So unless that, unless you played, unless there was a, 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 a NBA or a WNBA team in Duke, right? You know, when you go, you got to try to create a whole new fan base. So, you know, more teams, expand the, uh, the, the, um, the roster, one and done. Because the overseas girls get to come in. The Cambridges, they get to come in and, and play, right? Um, worst case scenario, if you're, if, it, there's only one or two girls in the country that can come sh one year and done and straight out of high school. But you're bringing so much flavor. Like right now, you got Juju who had, what, 30, 32 last yeah. night? And then you had um, Boo. Fu Wiley. Yeah. Fuck SC. Yeah, for South Carolina. 17 off the bench. <laughs> yeah, right up. Yeah. 17, you put those two in the W, like there's a fan base that's coming with them. You're going to sell more products. I mean, it, you have to try it, right? You're missing, you're missing out on a Kobe, a Tracy McGrady, um, a Kevin Garnett. You're so what about all the, the rest, though? Like, just, oh, well. When, when the NBA, when they, when they was letting them high school kids in, the, them old heads was getting chopped. I mean, do you still need the Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi? Do you still need the girls who's been there for 20 years? You don't need the 40 years. Like, they'll 30, be good, though. What they'll, I'm saying is 37 to 40, they, you can cut them. Like, they're not doing anything to your fan base. But then you can't complain about not having vets and shit. We have vets at from 30 well, to happens, damn 35. No, what I'm saying is like, what happens to the ones that do leave early and it, it doesn't pan out? There's your be overseas, getting her little thing in, and then come back. But that's not how that's not how they their minds work, Gil. No, I know because they use they use the four year get your education, and then by the time your career is done, whatever you um, whatever you majored in is outdated anyway. It's outdated. It you got a all the time. criminal you justice. It happens all the time. You, yeah, you, so you and think it happens college, all the time. You think college is the reason why some girl players don't make it to the next level because it's too much time? Because, I mean, I've seen girls who come into college, top ranked, blah, 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 by year four. It's done, yeah. They're like... It's true. They're, well, they're, it's they're true. like, I don't even want to play anymore. Yeah. They're burnt. Then they're not... They didn't get any better. Everyone else got better. But, like, you think it's because of them being in school for too long? Yeah. Or... Now, okay, football how about this? Do the same thing. Let's, take, let's take you your freshman year, right? We put you through college for the same years. Or we put you in the W. We, we're going to guarantee you those okay. same years. Guarantee. That's we're going to guarantee you those same years. When you guys meet each other at 23, who's the better player? Yeah, the W player. Mm -hmm. But the so, important thing is they got to be guaranteed. No, but what I'm saying is, no, what I'm saying is now, think about, now think about what you just said. If the same 23-year-old who was in the system of the WNBA played against the college player and they're better, think about it all the way across the board and how that game changes. Yeah. And and that's what I the feel NBA like figured out. At some point, it can get there, but there's the salaries are just gonna have to be higher because. But, but, the, the, but no, it the has salary, to be. It's the player development too. Like I think the major element that he's talking about is how much better the players get because in the league, you're training league, you're training the way they train in the league, you're doing everything the way they do in the league. So there's no adjustment periods after that first year compared to doing three years in college and then having to come in and do that first I will, year. I will say that there's not much skill development in the W. In college either. Yeah, so a lot of the development is like on your own. Yeah. And then you go overseas and get better and then you come back. Like I don't, I don't really hear from my team from like a development standpoint until a month before training camp starts, maybe. Ooh. Yeah, as I said, it's like it's like they don't put the they they want a league to be successful, but they don't want to put no energy into it. Right. That's not yeah. how it works. I agree. Right? <laughs> like you, if you're if you say you're bleeding money, then bleed it. 
right? Then, then take the fucking Band-Aid off and actually fix the problem versus just keep putting Band-Aids on thinking it's going to just heal itself. Yeah, no, That's not how it works. You have, to, you have to really have a structure, have real basketball minds making the decisions because mm-hmm. if you're going to lose one million and you're a billionaire, you might as well lose six. It's to say, just write it off. Mm-hmm. To build this structure it for it to be solid later. I mean, and that's why I do love this NIL era because you you are it's having forcing. girls come in with these humongous fan bases that we didn't have because we didn't have social media like that. Or when we were in college, we were like banned from it, essentially. So, Nitters. yeah, it's going to force their hand for sure. So, I mean, I think we, it can be a positive for the league. They just have to accept what is going on. And I think a player like Juju is probably going to be the one that changes it because she's, she's, this is like the first freshman superstar group mm-hmm. coming through this, this, this NIL. This group right here? Yeah. With the NIL bag. With a bunch of, yeah, with an NIL bag. Mm-hmm. From high school mm-hmm. that are coming through, so. And then, like, that, that's why I said, if you're dub and you're just sitting there just four years, you're just four years before we can get these girls. Just think about the game that, yeah. like, it, look how much momentum you lose you just yeah dig it, like I said, if, just just go back to the nba right and we think about the early 90s right you have like the shaquille o'neal's coming in and then a trinkle of high school kids so how come the nba took that out oh the players players gave it up okay the nba players gave it up for uh, uh, one extra, <laughs> one extra day of All Star Weekend vacation. Okay. Um, <laughs> the owner, <laughs> it was it was forty seven fifty three owners split. We wanted it to be fifty one forty nine us. Um, what and we gave up the high school for the one and done. But like that's what I said. But think about all those one and duns and those high school kids. Those those are the kids that really changed. Like the Kobe's, the mm-hmm. T Mac. They changed yeah, the game. Right. They they made the four man irrelevant and made it made it taller. Mm-hmm. Right? They made the four man taller. Like those. Like you know, you seen the like. Think about if Kobe went to college four years. Like think about a four year player that comes into the NBA four years. Yeah, he's trash. He's, he's I mean, been water, he's think, been he's been WNBA, watered down. Yeah, I don't been, think the WNBA would miss out on anything if they took one of those guaranteed spots for a vet and gave it to a rookie yeah, that they believe in. It's, but it's that's re- something. It's that return on investment. I talk about this shit um, in my book. Um, it's funny that we're even talking about it because it's like when you understand what the owners compared to the sponsors at these universities who offer and give this money for these scholarships that they be paying for, the return on the investment. How am I gonna get my return, right? We talk about how do you carry a fan base from this spot to this spot? And I used to have this conversation about the Amaris, the T-Max, the Kobe's, everyone that came out of high school, Mm -hmm. but they didn't have an audience to bring with them, right? So the NBA couldn't profit off of the Kobe's, the T-Max, the Amaris, they didn't create a fan base in high school because it wasn't social media era, right? We didn't get to see all of the shit that they was doing in high school to create a fan base so they could bring over to the NBA. So the NBA started to see during the Dwight Howard, Sebastian Tell affair, that class when they came out of high school, that's when they stopped trying to let high school players come straight to the NBA. I think they stopped it after that year. Well, after? Sean Livingston and uh, J.R. Smith here. When they came mm-hmm. out of high school, they uh, stopped it Perk, after that. Perk would have been a. Uh, <coughs> Perk was Perk that year. It would have been 2005, 4 or 5? Yeah, uh, 2005 NBA Collective yep. Bargaining Agreement. Yep, that was it. And so mm-hmm. when, when, when they started seeing how they couldn't profit off that, this is the NCAA. Mm-hmm. They're saying if we keep our players longer, we have to incentivize them now. How do we keep them here long enough for them to create a fan base? So now the return on the investment is gonna go trickle over to the NBA. That's their collective deal. Just like an ESPN deal, a TV deal, Mm -hmm. it's a farm deal. You bring our players, you get them them all beefed up, bring them over here when they got a fan base and we can can soak that. It ain't happening as much because these these kids ain't creating no fan base. And they're not getting, the, the kids that are coming out of college now, 
they're only doing one year, mm -hmm. and they're not creating a big enough fan base to carry over to the NBA. Yeah, the high school can, fan base. That's what I'm, I'm saying. It's not big enough. The high school fan base is. Not now. Because now you have to perform beyond that. Like, as soon as you cross so the line. So you're saying that they, they lose their high school fan base in college? If they go to college. If they go to college. If they go to college. You lose your high school fan base. They're losing it right but in, that, college, in that middle. But a college fan base doesn't travel to the NBA. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying when they get there, that one year of college dilutes their fan base and it brushes them out. So only your core comes with you to the NBA. People who was with you when they that's first seen you and all that, that's, that's a small percentage. That's a lot. It's a small percentage, especially after it's diluted out. When LeBron came in, his whole fan base was high school kids. But that's LeBron. We're talking about one guy. Kobe the White Howard's didn't get Kobe convert Brown. over. Kwame's in. All of these other Kwame guys Brown. didn't. He was the number one pick. But they wasn't. They didn't have fan bases. What? The f what? Kobe they didn't Bryant have was a, fan bases. Kobe bro. Bryant was a starter in the All Star game. From his fan base, average fucking what came off the bench. Bro, it didn't happen his rookie year. What are you talking about, bro? How many He's games just did he going start? against me now. How many games did he start? Man. He started one game. He started one game his second year. Oh my god, <laughs> man. Was he an All Star his rookie year, bro? No, he was the starter the second year. Bro, the was he a, was he an All Star his rookie year, bro? No, his second year. Okay, so he had a whole year to play in the NBA, bro, and show he, he was play? good, bro. Did he play in the NBA? What I'm saying is, it was his high school fan base. What are you talking about? LaMelo Ball, his high school fan base. Like, um, what, what is the, uh, what is the other Ball brother? Lonzo Ball, mm -hmm. high school fan base. Um, yeah, but different, I mean. Jalen Green, high school fan base. This is, these are all high school. High school players, that's what I really, high school kids know high school kids. They don't really know NBA players. Right, uh, my high school. These kids will rather go to a high school game and watch this player before they watch the NBA. When when you see them kids roll up, them roll up them pants. They're not rolling up the pants because of an NBA player. They're rolling it up because they seen Jalen Green roll it up, and you can see his little nuts hanging out the bottom of the shorts. That's what started that. Now the little girls want to do it because the boys is doing it. That's all high school stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is like, when you're talking about selling shoes and selling jerseys, you're selling that to high school, middle school kids. These kids don't know college basketball. College basketball kids watch college basketball. High school, middle school kids do not watch college basketball. They watch the NBA. So it's better for a player to go straight out of high school to the NBA because he gets to take all his money with him. When you're selling tickets and you're selling shoes and product, Steph Curry is selling to who? Kids. John Moran is selling to who? Kids. Well, I've did the research already on this. Let's keep this thing moving. We can talk about this for an extensive amount of time. But let's talk about when you get to the league. Uh, nicknames are an important part of basketball culture, and there are some great ones throughout history, and there are some questionable ones too. So, <laughs> Josh Giddy is gaining a reputation for dropping dimes on sideline out of bounds plays. <laughs> uh, the Athletics' John Hollinger tried to show him some love by nicknaming him yeah. the Slob Wizard. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but Giddy. He's not feeling the new nickname. <laughs> oh, no. John, what did you do? Okay slop wizard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, let's not make that stick. <laughs> That's been sticking too long already. Well, so, rule number one of any nickname, if, if you say you don't like it, they're just going to keep calling it. Yeah. So uh, what are your thoughts on Giddy's slob wizard nickname? The slob Gotta wizard, go. Josh Giddy. Got to go. Yeah, it just makes, <laughs> makes him seem like he's out of shape and fat. <laughs> He's a slob, huh? Yeah, you know, we're in L.A. We can't use that well, word. Well, you guys don't know what slob means. We can't use what? <laughs> you can't use the word you just supposed to even go there. I'm yeah, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> For <laughs> anybody watching who doesn't know what slob means, it means sideline out of bounds. Okay, that's to some. To some. Yeah, 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 yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> to me. But every time I hear it, like coaches said, I'm always like, ooh. <laughs> Blobs and slobs. You're not saying that. At, <laughs> you're not saying that at Dorsey High School. They're, no. They're, you're not saying that at in, Park in Inglewood. We just call them out of bounds. Yeah, sideline out of bounds. Oh, yeah, sideline sure. out of bounds. <laughs> all together. Say it all together. <laughs> say it say all, fast. All, all, all together. All grow together. Up, Coach, please. what we doing? Sideline out of bounds. <laughs> He said, like, us grow up, tell them grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Poor John, he had no idea what he did. He probably was like, I like this is a good one. He's a, he's a slop wizard. Slop wizard. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> he thought he ate that. Move. Just saying, for those you know, certain parts of the country, that's not, you know, you might get chin check for that. <laughs> He's cooking, though. He thought he was cooking. He, he thought really he was, let him cook. thought man. he ate that let tweet. Let that man cook. He was man. proud of that one. Yeah. So, uh, we, we've already talked about some of the worst nicknames in NBA history. Uh, Jameer Nelson's the crib midget. Uh, uh, mm. I think Jason what? Maxfield was baby eater, if I'm not mistaken. Baby eater? Craig Elo's nickname was Eggs. Apparently, because he likes making eggs. Uh, what's what's a nickname someone tried to give you that you hated? Nacho, you like that girl? I came up with that one. You came up with yeah, Nacho. I was, I was screaming every time I hit a shot. Nacho from Nacho Libre. Nacho. <laughs> No, okay. Great movie. Now it makes sense. <laughs> that would be Not hilarious. You know NBA players hate when you say stuff after you score. <laughs> hilarious. Um, Lexi, did somebody try to give you a nickname that you weren't well, rocking Well, when I was younger, they called me Sexy Lexi, so as like a 13-year-old, I was like, I don't want to be but, that. Uh, but, who was, like, <laughs> but now I love Who was it. calling you that? Women or was there like... Just random people because it rhymed, I guess. Oh, man, but like when I was younger, obviously you're like, oof. sexy, no. But now I'm like, yep, that's me. Sexy Lexi. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was calling you anyway. I was calling you that. <laughs> sexy Lexi over there. I thought that was your hey, rhyme anyway. It was like, what is going on? Everybody's appropriate age now. Everybody's cool. <laughs> Shit. Uh, nasty. Was it McNasty? Nasty. <laughs> Who gave you that nickname? <laughs> Yeah, Ticket, man. Ticket did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> when he yeah. told you, did you have to just accept it because it was Ticket saying? Nah, I, was, I made a move. And it was like preseason. We was doing some shit in Vegas, and I made a move on one of the point guards. He was like, ooh, that shit nasty. I'm going to call you now. I'm like, what? Nasty. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that's what I was. And it went right down. It went right down that rabbit hole. Like, yeah. That's your porn no name, man. huh? Nigga, you get nasty with them, don't you? Nigga, I'm like, yeah, I do. You call it no grown man nasty. The work, you man. This is for the work only. For the work you only. You get the ticket. You give it me, McNasty. Nah, Come man, on, man. You tripping, man. Let's change that. Shoddy. Call me Shoddy. Shoddy. That's cool. Call me Shoddy, man. And we also got to mention that uh, <laughs> one of Nick Young's nicknames, Swaggy P, was was uh, Bean Burrito. What? And Corey McGetty had a nickname, Bad Porn. <gasps> uh, what, what? You must have got caught. But, <laughs> so let me, bad Porn. Bad let, porn. Let, let me, How do you get that nickname? So Legend says that Bad Porn moniker came from an irate Golden State Warriors fan who justified it by saying, sure, there's penetration and scoring, but are you really happy with what you're seeing? <laughs> <laughs> Played? It's a fair oh, okay. Well thought out. Okay, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good yeah. one. That's a that was a so, good one. What's the wildest nickname that you've heard? The wildest? Did Tyrone Hill have a nickname? Damn, bro. You go straight for the jungle. No, I'm just saying. You I'm go just straight for the, some guys You like go that. straight for the jungle. <laughs> straight for the jungle. <laughs> Wasn't it Bones or am I no time. No, I'm just trying to figure out what kind of nickname did they give him. <laughs> so you always... You go funny nigga. His nickname was T-Time. <laughs> T-Time. T-Time. Like T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, man. Yeah, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the ball. <laughs> so we talked about Slob Wizard. If you grew up in L.A., 90s, 2000s, you knew the legend of Super Crip. Mm -hmm. But the fact that college coaches would come on recruiting visits and refer to him as Super Crip mm -hmm. was probably the wildest thing. What's up, Super Crip? <laughs> man, that's crazy. That's crazy. I, I think what names, are not, what names are not creative is when we all did it, right? We just, you know... Use our initials and our number. GA? Yeah, GA zero. Like, <laughs> what about AK 47? That seemed to. That was nice. That one. can't do that. AR 15, also, we had That's to. Nice. We had to. Now put you know, on like the shelf. Y'all was, yeah. was fucking with uh, Grandmama. The, Grandmama was cool. I mean, back then. Hindsight. So, back then. Grandmama. I mean, you know, like men dressing up as women. I'm just but, asking no, 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 a question, no, 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 Gilbert. No, no, no. I'm just asking no, no. y'all, like, for real? But, but you remember in the 90s, everybody, everybody was doing it. <laughs> it was a thing, black men dressing up as women in, in movies. Like everybody was doing <laughs> it. Oh, like Big Mama's House and stuff? Except, except, Mama's except Eddie Griffin. Yeah. Williams, uh, He's doubtfire. Except Eddie doubtfire. Griffin. And, uh, and uh, Martin. That was not, that was a little after, wasn't yeah, it? Um, Big Mama's House. Jamie Foxx. Wesley Snipes. 
Yeah, um, living to Wong Fu and yeah. Living Color. Yeah, yeah. Didn't yeah, see it, but, Fu, but didn't see it. But I'm gonna send him a buff. Mm-hmm. Shin, what was her Shanae name? Shanae. 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 Yeah. Shanae. Yeah. That was funny, at least though. I mean, that grandma. Is funny. Did like, anyone? Like, about I was how young, so I didn't know. It was just cool, grandma. Ma, it's, like, it's like well, Uncle Drew, predecessor. Like, I mean, how was I, it? Like, for, it was in, in. It was different because if you look back, like you're saying, if you look back, you'd be like. Oh, it, we didn't notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just it was Larry like, Johnson, yeah, right? Larry. And then you go, you like looking at it now, and I'm like, hold up, man. We got to get Larry hold Johnson up, on man. the show to figure out how that conversation started. And like, we want you to be an old ass grandma that gives people buckets. I think it was Family one, Matters. No, he was I on see, Family yeah, Matters. Yeah, you did make that Family <laughs> Matters. Like, I seen, I seen a, I seen a doc, and he was saying that it something came up, and they had to scratch it, and then they broke that, and he was like, fine, whatever, let's just get this over with, and then it just took off. But back then, back then, nicknames was the shit. You had the worm, yeah. right? Uh, Stretch Armstrong, the human highlight reel, the uh, Doctor Dunk, Doctor. Chocolate Thunder, Chocolate <laughs> Thunder, <laughs> the Ice. What was his name? Uh, uh, Daryl Dawkins. Daryl Dawkins. Back, yeah, Dar- 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 back then, Black. nicknames was yeah, the thing. Really but you had to earn them. No more. Huh? I'm thinking about there's it. There's not. There's not really nicknames anymore. Particularly no, good no ones. because you because people want to. No, because people want to give themselves their nickname versus earning a nickname. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the difference. Like Larry Legend, like he didn't make that up. They gave it to him. You know, Magic John. Like, Magic. Uh, you, gave it, you earned it. Right. You didn't just make the shit up yourself. So are there it's any your players? handle now, though. It's, are it's there your Instagram any players handle. right now? That's that your name now. Are nicknameless that deserve a nickname? KD is an easy money sniper. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't Chef, slim, Chef Curry. Slim, the, the servant. Is, chef, is, it, is his nickname Chef Curry? I think so. It is. The For chef. the most part, yeah. he'd be chefing up. Souffle. The beard. The beard. The beard. Okay, see, yeah. yeah. Basically, though, he has a beard. I remember just saying. So, so, the, the, so the actual audience has to, or, you know, because... Like Agent Zero came from... From the fans. fans. Yeah, the yeah. fans. Yeah, because like, it was coming from my... So it came from my... What was that? Not Black Twitter. Um, it was called <laughs> MySpace. So my handle was Black President one and you know how you, you have just the top talked eight? about MySpace yep. like it was yep. a fossil. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's the did, best shit ever. And though. I did this thing where I had like they un- I had someone unlock it, so I had fifty. Yeah. Right. Like f- I had fifty friends, all women, and it was called it was called <laughs> Secret Service. Right? It was called Secret Service. So when I was playing in D.C., someone's like, man, you're like an agent, man. They're like, because you got the Secret Service, you're an agent, like Agent Zero. And I was like, that's fire. Damn, that's a fire ass <laughs> name. Why does everything always come back to the work? What you mean? No, before that, that's what was, the work do. They help you. Now, before that, my name was Z- Zero, <laughs> the he- Zero the Hero. Boo. Uh, they help you get through Boo. tough times. They help Agent you. Zero Everything okay. can be pinpointed and traced back to, to the beginning of time. The work was, inspired I'm, me, man. Like, at first, it was, it was uh, Zero the Hero from college. Yeah. And it was trash. Yeah. No, you, you, said that in the, you said it in the commercial, though, you know what I'm saying? Zero, zero to hero. Yeah, zero to hero. It's like, yeah. Zero to hero. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero's better. Zero is better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, away we go. Uh, the Miami Heat debuted a new Heat culture themed city edition court for their matchup against the Lakers Monday night. Against the Lakers? So, uh, oh my gosh. The court features Pat Riley's core values of the team inside both of the keys. It says, hardest working, best conditioned, most professional, unselfish, toughest, meanest, nastiest team in the NBA. So, what are your guys' thoughts on these new Heat culture? City Edition Court. I'm gonna ask our former Heat fan <laughs> slash Celtics fan slash current Victor Wimbanyama. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that, you know, because it's they're not playing like that right now. I don't, that's why I don't regret making my choice because <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> they still like playing like I seen they was gonna come in playing like this, and I just didn't want to come into the office. Every week and have to fight y'all, <laughs> them niggas, because they just don't show up, man. Like I need them to. So um, he got some validity in the statement, but they just got to play like that shit all the time. They can't just be out there putting shit on the court and then going out getting their ass whooped. So you know, it's got to carry over. When it do, it mean a lot. I don't know. You could put all those words in the key like that. I don't like. I don't like it. It's just it's too much. Trashy. It's too much. <laughs> Like, I mean, in the key, like, I mean, around, uh, I mean. I was trying to think of anywhere else they could have put that. I don't know. In your face, right there. It's odd. Right there. Where he's coming to dunk? 
<laughs> Read it. <laughs> Read them and weep. <laughs> so the internet had a little fun, decided to, to do a mock-up of what the Thunders City Edition Court would look like if they followed the He's model. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the uncontested podcast. It's literally just all the rap. That lined up oh very God. nicely. That lined up nicely, didn't it? That lined up perfectly, didn't it? Fair Presti, pull Yo, the trigger, get it done. Hilarious. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny as hell. Now that would hit. But <laughs> let's talk about your former team, the Heat, a little bit. Currently three and four. Still feeling the, the aftermath of not landing Dame or another superstar in the offseason. So as you look at this squad, will the Heat make a major move this season to strengthen the roster? Obviously, Tyler Hero's name has been mentioned a ton. And trade rumors, then after the Dame trade, like, oh, no, we actually want you, dog. Like, we, we. They need to move them, move them pieces, man. Like I said, Hero, Robinson, Lowry, get them up out of there. And if you can take the young fella with them, take the young fella with them. You know, they got pieces in, in Philly that they trying to unload. I already know they trying to make moves in Chicago, too, because they're not, they not, they not doing nothing this year. I can already see it. It's already in the water. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of different pieces to go different places. They just got to be willing to part ways. They like to, like he said, they like to stick to their guns. So they'll probably keep that whole team up until the trade deadline. I mean, Hero, Larry, and... Velasquez. That's three, three shooters? Get a guard back. Mm -hmm. Levine. You think the Bulls, Bulls would give that up? For, oof. No, they won't. They already, they, I mean, they're stacked. Levine, up Levine and Kobe White? That could be all right. That's a good, that's a good possibility right there. Wait, did y'all just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that, that can be all right. How come Tyler Hero is always in the trade discussions and never gets traded? Um, like it's every because he's the, year. Well, because he's the only valuable piece, probably at the right price. Mm -hmm. That you know, like he he has a he has a position, but he doesn't have a position, right? He's just a guy who can come off instant offense. So um, if he's going to go to like some type of contender team, he's going to come off the bench. So you think they're kind of like letting him loose right now, so he's easier to train? Mm. Because, yep. I mean, the business of it all, obviously, business is business, but sometimes I get lost in it because I'm like, okay, like, y'all don't want him, but now you let him take all the shots. But that's showcasing. Losing. That's called showcasing. That's, that's messed up, man. You showcase your talent mm -hmm. before pushing them off in the trade. So they let him do, like, I've been in that situation where they'll put you in if they're showcasing you for a trade or they'll, they'll bench you. It's, it's whatever perception they want to paint for the next team that picks you up. That's all janky. Right? So they can either bench you and put you on the, the DMP list, mm. right? And now you, you don't get hurt. Right? Now, you, you good trade value, but you're not playing, so we don't know what you can do. Or they'll showcase you and put you in the starting lineup, start giving you plays and shit. You're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> we about to move your ass, nigga. We need you to score. <laughs> we need you to score you a couple buckets. Get, yeah, we need you to go out there and make this trade happen. For sure. We just like, you we been on that? <laughs> Fool, got, got him all the time. Yeah. Take him. And he never going to play again, <laughs> I you promise you. Be sitting there mad like, damn, we just got rid of him. He had 38 last night. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that happen to a player and did they know what was going on or were they just like, oh, okay, team's finally riding with me? I mean, back then they used to, the, the, the agent used to tell you. Okay. Like, you're about, they about to play you a lot, a lot tonight. You're going to get some reps up, go out there and do your thing. And so when you get that, it's kind of like a green light without talking to your coach. So is the coach telling the agent that? Nah, the, t the team is telling the agent that we're looking to trade him. Mm -hmm. So we're going to play him a lot more. So tell him to get ready for, <laughs> for shots and shit. Or a player who's demanding a trade and, you know, they're still like, we need to see him. And then it's like a couple pieces traded, so they're like, all right, we're going to play you. Go on, do yeah, your thing. Yeah. Good luck with you. <laughs> Get out there. <laughs> with the That's Start calling so plays you never have. Two drop. Two. For sure. Oh, I'm the two. two. Me. Yeah, yeah, I'm the two. I'm <laughs> playing the two today. <laughs> never heard this play before in practice. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, nigga. What? <laughs> never heard this Christmas. play before. Christmas. So speaking of heat culture, uh, we got to talk a little bit about Brown. Brown was back in Miami. Offer some thoughts on his time with the Heat uh, to ESPN's Dave McMenamin. So Bron, Bron said, I think I would still be at this level no matter if I would have came here or not. Let's not get it twisted. The four years I was here, it was amazing. I loved everything about it. Loved this franchise. This franchise is top tier. It's one of the best franchises in the world. But as far as my career, 
my career was going to be my career as far as individually because I know how much I put into the game and I know how much I've strived to be as great as I can be. But as far as what I was able to learn here, was second to none, that's for sure. So, you know, this, this quote has kind of created a stir amongst the basketball community. We got to point out, Brown won two MVPs, two chips, two finals MVPs. He made the finals all four years that he was in South Beach, you know. Not four, not five, not six, just two. <laughs> uh, and, you know, when Paul joins us last season, he, pr he pretty much said the same thing in regards to to Miami. So, will LeBron still be the same player if he never played for the Heat? Yeah. No question about it. You think he would still have two champ those two championships, but somewhere else? Yeah. Mm. In Cleveland, he stayed. Mm. Yeah. So what happens there, Gil? I don't think he went <clears throat> two if does he, he stays in leave? Cleveland. Huh? He, so if he doesn't go to to Miami, does he leave? Yeah. Does he go yeah, somewhere yeah. else, or he, he stays? Does. And you saying wherever he goes, he's gonna win championship? Really? I don't mm -hmm. know. Really? Yeah. So he really he'd yeah. have went west. Championship. He'd have beat Kobe. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You think any other team really? would have allowed him to do that? Whatever the fashion, whatever the hell they did. I think people are. Him. I think people. Well. I feel like you want to play Shannon Sharp shit first, or? I don't think we have it accessible. Okay, so. Yeah, I heard Shannon. I heard Shannon Sharp, and you know, that, that was weird because you know he's supposed to be a LeBron supporter. Right. I think he's keeping it real, Gil. No, he's keeping it. He's keeping it false. He's keeping Wait, it what is Shannon Sharp saying? Real. Okay. Uh, well, let's 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 then put it in perspective. When LeBron James was a free agent, him and him, Bosh and Wade and Mike Miller were teamed up. So in theory, wherever he went, they were going to they were going to win championships because it was four of them together. That's the narrative that they're not understanding. So if it was Heat, if it was New York Knicks where they were supposed to go, they were going to dominate because four of them was coming together. It wasn't just him going. The Knicks messed the trade up by signing Amari Stoudemire because they didn't know what LeBron and them were doing. So they signed Amari, and then they're like, we don't, we don't want to play with Amari. We, we have our crew, right? And then they said, all right, well, let's just go to Miami because they didn't want to play in Cleveland. Bosh didn't want to play in Cleveland too cold and because um, he wanted to get out of Toronto. And Wade was like, <laughs> I'm not going there. Right, so they was coming as a package already. So no matter where he went, yes, he was gonna be who he was. So that's basically you saying no matter where he went, they was gonna follow him and support him in getting a championship somewhere else, regardless of where he went. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really about him being by himself and going to win them championships. Like he's saying, if I didn't go to Miami, he's saying it as if he's not going to be with those other niggas. No, that's what. No, he said heat. I don't know what he's saying. If thing. I, 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 don't, I didn't really need this Miami thing to solidify they my him. career. They needed him. He didn't need Miami. They needed him. So you don't think like the the heat culture, all that stuff. What was it? What is the heat culture? The Wayne, what they the Wayne the, Wade and his championship the before, the, before he got there. The championship that the, the, the Wade won. Oh, because they traded for a generational player by the name of Shaquille O'Neal, bringing Gary Payton, bringing all these other players to build with Dwayne Wade so they can win a championship. That's what the Heat culture is? Because all their championships was bought with generational players. Mm. They wasn't building nothing. They didn't mm. build a team. They bought a team. Mm. They bought Shaquille O'Neal, Gary Payton, and all them. And then the next championships they won, they bought um, LeBron, I mean, LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Mike Miller so this, and Ray Allen. This, they bought that. So this heat culture now is new? Oh, I can tell you what the heat culture is. Like, okay, did it start? The, the notepad right is out. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, before LeBron got there, he said, he said it was <laughs> bought. It wasn't bought. They, those players was inherited. Because no, if you can say that about them, you can say that about all the teams that actually. No, but he, he's champions. When you're talking about heat culture, then that like heat culture should look like Golden State culture. Why should it? They it and then them. it wouldn't be heat they, culture because they be, drafted. It would them. be Golden State culture. No, what I'm saying is they drafted those players and built them. 
Right, you're, you're pretending you're building these players because before LeBron got there, first round loss. Uh, it says 15 and 67, first round loss, first round loss, first round loss. Then LeBron and the crew came, and then they went to the championship, and then they won a championship, and then they won a championship, and then they went to the championship. LeBron left. LeBron left. Wade and the Heat culture and Bosch is still there. Uh, no playoffs. Where was the, did he take the Heat culture with him? <laughs> did he take the Heat culture with him when he left? Because they didn't make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. 33 and 49, no playoffs. LeBron, just LeBron, went to a team that didn't make the playoffs and they went to the finals. So where LeBron went, we went to Miami, they won the finals on a struggling team. Then he comes to Cavs, they went to the championship. Won a ring a year later. So Cavs culture. Won, won a ring <laughs> later. So Only he LeBron left. Culture. <laughs> Only he left. Mm -mm. And they were in last place the following year. This is extraordinary information he's dropping on us, everybody. Yeah. And then if you all this all this LeBron love is just extraordinary today. Hey, I'm just saying you said keep it real. I'm keeping it real. So I'm what not, do you, but all, So let's take All you're saying all that to say what exactly? Are you saying that LeBron is his own culture? Yeah, I, what are you what saying? Did, what, exactly? what did um what did James Harden say? He's a system. He is the system LeBron is the culture. Ooh. And that's the thing, like, you, he was trying to say LeBron James wouldn't be a top five player if he didn't go to Miami. That ain't what he said, though. Yeah, he did. He said, how can we put you in the top five easily before, without heat culture, he has a scoring title, assist championship, two-time All-NBA, two-time MVP, three-time All-Star MVP, um, three-time All-First Team All-Defense. I'm pretty sure that with his resume still, and then leading the NBA in scoring, he will still be where he is right now with just two championships. Really? Two MVPs, two uh, finals MVPs. Yes, sir. Really? But do, yes, sir. Do you think he wins those championships with the Cavs and with the Lakers without that time with the Heat? The man went to a team that was 33 and 49 and took him to the championship, sir. 33 and 49, hey, sir. And then he went He's to... He's not going to answer the question. Lakers. When he <laughs> went to the Lakers. Hey, you know you asked him a question? Right, the See how you asked him a question? And he glossed all the way over that <laughs> motherfucker. Didn't give you no... There wasn't even looking to no, answer the question. He was just going to give you this whole... One player... Hey, answer one, the question. One player going to a bad team and they're going to the championship. How can you say he would not have won the championship in those four years? But you don't think him being in Miami and with Pat Riley, like, you don't think it had anything to do with his... It probably taught him how to be a professional, taught him how to be more disciplined, does, does, all different... Does, does, but winner. what has Pat Riley done? He's helped like him win. What? When you help him win, Showtime. he becomes a winner. Who helped who win? He helped LeBron win his... First. No, LeBron helped them win another championship, just like Shaq and all of them helped him win the championship. Did they help each other, though? Can we say but that? But can LeBron go to what? Cleveland and, and show Kyrie them how to win a championship? Well, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have had Kyrie. Miami. So well, that's well, the thing okay, we also well, got to What about. I'm saying is, when he just him left, the Heat culture's still there. Dwayne Wade is still there. Chris Bosh is still there. How the fuck do they not make the play... Not the playoffs? Where is the Heat culture? You have a bad season. You had oh, bad, had you a have a bad, bad season. season. Okay. Yeah, you had a bad season. Huh. <laughs> pitfalls. You know it, it, it didn't seem like the pitfalls. You know did not saying? seem like LeBron had a bad season because he was in the championship. But he had again. He had, with the Lakers. Did the Lakers make? Did the uh, Lakers? <laughs> did the Lakers make the playoffs? <laughs> the first year LeBron That's got there. No. Nope. Following year they won a championship though. And, the, and then the third year. No, he got, second. He got the third hurt. year. He got. There. But they won the championship. Third year they didn't make the playoffs. When did? How about Pat Riley? He got hurt the fourth year. What happened the fourth year? He got hurt. How about fourth year? What happened the fourth year? How about Pat Riley in his right? system? So we can't say LeBron ain't had no pitfalls either. And like everybody had pitfalls. You have bad seasons sometimes. At 37, 36. Where you get swept out the playoffs. 37, you know, sometimes. 36, 38. Sometimes. We're talking about when he was 20 something years old. You're talking about this man could have went to any team he wanted to and won it. If Bosch would have came, if Bosch would I don't believe came that. I don't believe that. Because you just said they was Bosch all going to be on one team year. anyway. If so if Bosch you, was there. It, if Bosch came to Cleveland, Bosch and LeBron, they don't win the championship? 
Without. They don't. They don't put themselves in a position. Who, Before he go to Miami, they were all free agents at the same time. Before he Without with no D Wade in the mix, no D Wade in the mix, just him and Bosch. Nah, mm, no, 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 no. And Cleveland, not enough. Nah, nah, because no. nah, nah, he did. Not he, didn't, he didn't take at like twenty something years old, 22, 23. He didn't take that sorry ass Cavs team to the championship. Yeah, he like, got. Oh, what, he, what are we talking? He got about? there. He he didn't do it again. What are we talking about? We're, we're he didn't acting, do it again after that. We're acting like his. Calf, he did that shit like one we're time. Like his Cavs team was all of that. Y'all keep using that as an excuse for that man, man. It's a team, man. That, 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 you do what you got to do the with thing, the team you got. So, so he did some great shit with the, with cool, the team that but didn't. But that's not the question. The question is, would he have been him without him? Yes. Because he's been him without them. I disagree. He's been him without the Heat I culture. I disagree. Okay, so, so tell me what you disagree with. Yes, I just yeah. disagree. I don't think he'll be the same player without that Miami experience. Okay, so before... That Miami was, experience showed him a lot. So who was he then? He has a scoring title, an assist championship. I understand those accolades oh. and stuff. I understand so all that. So that doesn't matter. So individual The whole accolades. conversation is about being in Miami and winning those championships if his career Thank would be... You. So he take him out. What he, so you're saying he'd be a champion, though. You talk about individual accolades. I think individually LeBron was still... Just like they say, Kobe wouldn't win a championship without Shaq. He proved that wrong. Winners, the winners win, champion. You're, you're, but we have no way to prove this fake. wrong, though. This is something that's already happened. We're just saying if it, if it didn't happen... He wouldn't he still... be a top five player in the NBA. No, we, the we're considering... It, people consider him number one. Because of those championships, you because of those out. MVPs, because of those the things MVPs that he got before that. He had two before that. What if he went somewhere else? He has this before that. The finals MVPs? He has two finals MVPs without Miami. Yes. Hmm? He has a finals MVP in Cleveland and a finals MVP oh, in Lakers. We're talking about before, said, before you're yeah. saying this. Uh, in the whole scheme of things. You just take out his stats out of Miami. Take his stats out of Miami and say, hey, you can have those Shannon Le Sharp. So LeBron was not the finals still? MVP in Miami? Yes. Yes, he has four. After so That's off. what I, I said. You so, just disagreed with me. I no, like, I said four. You can take the two off. So with his stats, without Miami, just get rid of his Miami career. Pretend he never went to Miami. And then read his accolades. Will we be He's considering not, him the GOAT without the Miami that play? Wasn't the, that, you're changing. I'm asking. He I'm said, not changing. I'm asking you now. He's I'm said, asking you now, you, though. You agreed with Shannon Sharp. He said he wouldn't be a top five player of all time without Miami. Mm -hmm. And his stats without Miami is still number two. You're not going to take him off number two. Sorry. Can't. With the two chips and two finals? MVP? Two chips, two finals, yes. See, two I chips, wasn't taking finals. the question MVP. like that. I was taking the question like, if you don't consider Miami's situation, is he's considered what we consider him now? Which is they consider him the GOAT. The greatest player of all time. So if you take that out, that's would we still put him there? I don't think so. Not but that, that's, that's not the question. Yeah, that's not the, the question. The top five question, I mean, shit. I mean, if that's the question, it, you, he could still be top five. Yeah, it's LeBron. But without the championships, it's like... But you got to think, like, if you take those championship years out, are we replacing them? With we're, what? We're just going to replace him oh, with... No, we just get or rid of it. You don't replace it? Yeah, we just yeah. get rid of it because what we're going to replace it with? More scoring? Yeah, Because he's no, got to exactly. pass the ball? Right, no. <laughs> but like, that, that, isn't that, that what would happen anyway, right? Yeah. If he's not winning, yeah, he's just scoring? More act, more individual accolades. Like, yeah, man. Another, probably, yeah, and no another MVP. Huh? But, no, but do we add chips to that? Do we no, do no. remove that from the equation? Or do you not care about that? Because we don't know. You just take the chips away. You just take all the stats away. You take everything away. He still is... Just stays in Cleveland. It doesn't exist. He's still two. Yeah. No matter what you do. Nah. So saying nah, he's not top nah, five. Nah, nah. He not two, though. He not two, though. No. No. Stop. Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> he not two now. <laughs> she. Well, let know, me ask you stop this that question. Shit. We, we talk about heat culture, right? We talked about it. Like you, and you said that, obviously, LeBron had a bigger impact on heat culture than heat he culture had on LeBron. Which, I'm just going off the facts. So who has a better culture then? <laughs> I'm going off, I'm just going off the facts, you know, before he got there. Where was the heat? Pat Riley's been there the whole time. Where was the heat culture? So they was losing. Who has the they better? They was losing. Who has the better? And Shaq got there. <laughs> Shaq, Gary Payton, all of them got there. And then Pat Riley didn't convince Shaquille O'Neal to take a backseat to Dwayne Wade. That wasn't heat culture. Gary Payton had to tell him, yo, let young boy ride. Not Pat Riley in the heat culture. It was Gary Payton. I came here to win a championship. Do this for me, big bro. You can Google it. Gary Payton had to convince Shaquille O'Neal to take a backseat to Dwayne Wade. That's not heat culture. 
they leave, we see in heat culture. 15, 30 something. Lost, 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 lost first round. And then, hey, LeBron, hey, come on over here. Come to this heat culture. Yeah. We're champions. And then, do like he did before. He get egotistic, right? Thinking he's bigger than everything. LeBron leaves, and we've seen what happens to heat culture. But let's talk about this heat culture quickly before we move on to the next thing. We had Darrell Wright on this, uh, well, it wasn't this couch, but on this very set. Iggy on this very set. Iggy said he would take about 95%. Of what, what he learned in the heat with him if he ever decided to get into that side. Mm -hmm. But I got to ask you this. We got Rashad here repping Wimby in the Spurs. <sighs> Who has the better culture, heat culture or Spurs culture? Mm. Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never been in either one of them, but I'm just going to go off of who's winning the championship with the players that they're drafting and developing. Spurs. Yeah, that's true. The luck of the ping pong balls, yeah, you know. That is I mean, you know, it's, it's weird that they got, you know, three generational centers. I mean, um, coincidence. I don't know, just every center that's just like that is a number crazy one, they get it. <laughs> coincidence with the connection to Wimby that the ping pong balls <laughs> bounced in their favor to be able to get them and not send them to, to Houston or Portland or somewhere else. But I think Pop has the basketball gods on his side for sure. He's got mind control over Debo. Oh, that's what they call it? The basketball they, gods? Oh, they call it basketball god. I thought it was called rigged. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> rigged? But, uh, no, basketball no, I'm gods. Allegedly. I'm, uh, yeah, okay, that's what we're going to call it. The, bas the basketball gods. The basketball gods. God. The basketball gods. You know, the yes. basketball gods. Disclaimer okay, time, yeah. underdog fan. This uh, does not support any of these players. But let's talk about uh, Monday night. So so LeBron dropped 30 points in 37 minutes against the Heat, engineering a fourth quarter comeback with AD on the bench with the, the hip spasm, the groin spasm, whatever Sean said he had. We go. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't enough to get the Here dub. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And Darvin Ham is feeling some heat for drawing up a questionable play in the final moments of the game. So let's take a look. Questionable play? So with the Lakers down one with nine seconds left. I, it wasn't questionable. It was a good play. It wasn't questionable. LeBron drove down I, the I lane. I see. I see. Kicked it to Cam Reddish. Where was the questionable play? For three, Cam Reddish missed. Uh, Gil, Cam Reddish is shooting 15%. Stand back, LeBron. From the, behind the arc. Where's the, the, where's the questionable play? So you're putting that looked like a great play. You're putting the fate of the game yeah. into the hands of a 15% shooter. Of a shooter professional from basketball Man, player. Man, Darvin Ham didn't draw up past the ball of damn nope. Cam Reddish in the no, corner. No, he did not. That wasn't uh, the play. The play was zipper up and take. And go take it to the rim. I saw the, you saw the picture of the board? What you see? You see the picture of the board? It's on Twitter. I didn't see it. Well, that, was what it that was, was real or not? No, I mean, it was to was, pass him to the corner. It was not to pass to the that's corner. What it, that's what the board said. No, it didn't say, we're going to drive, <laughs> and then you, you might have a wide There was layup. a straight line from the paint to the corner. With really? A circle. How, circle? How many? How, they're down what? One. Yeah, no, you're not, th you're not shooting the three. Down one. Lexi, was it on the... Lexi. It was on Twitter, but again, like, you can't... Who drew that up? I seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I seen you it saw, too, right? but I don't mean... Because people be playing... Because yeah. that could have been much. at any time of the game, At so. 9.25. Rew rewind it. Let, let, let's break down this play. Go rewind this, man. Put it in slow. At 9.25, <laughs> you was at... All right, zippers up. Boom. Now, stop. Okay. Okay, first of all... Austin Reeves, get your ass it, down it, it, to the in the corner. In the fucking corner, nigga. Bro. Bro. You already messed the play up. Fucking the play up. Right? And Unless that's where he was instructed no, to No, 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 no. Because you get down, they wanted to throw it over there. You, you get down, you get down no, to the, the you get down corner. all the way to the corner so your man can't help. His man is helping at the free throw line, Crazy. which forces LeBron to pick the bit, the ball up earlier. Yep. Yep. With that being said, because he has to dodge <laughs> that dude, Jimmy Butler... Punches at the Back. ball too, makes him picks the ball up. Yep. Now he don't have the power he has because he has to pick his stride up even faster. Now Bam, right here. Now you're he wouldn't have got that shot over Bam. So that only pass was why right, he gonna hit it. Look, see he made them pick it up too early. Yeah, also need to get and anything in that corner. with Christian Will right there. I know. Watch, look, Jimmy Dillon makes him pissy. Jimmy makes him pick it up, and then here Bam stops it. But what I'm saying, I mean, he could have dumped it down to Christian Woods inside position right there. But I, it, it looks easier on tape. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a that's a sound basketball play. Yeah, it's definitely. It's, I gotta agree. Like, but are you trusting? I understand the play, but are you trusting the personnel? Yeah. Like, Gil, if you out there, obviously you're Gil, so you you want four flat and you shoot. And I understand. But you see Cam Reddish there, 
You know he's a 15% shooter from three this season. Let it fly, young fella. Not guy. zero. Let it fly, young Not fella. Zero uh, everybody, hey, listen, this you is are basketball. basketball. This is player. basketball. Just, just, just I ain't thinking 15%. I'm thinking, man, you better shoot that shit when I pass it to you, bro. No <laughs> thoughts. Put it up, bro. For real. I'm, hey, if you make it, you make it. You miss it, you miss it, bro. Hey, go back again. I, I, need that. I wonder Let me, why they he... didn't put Austin Reeves over there, though. Because <clears throat> he wanted, you wanted Austin on his strong side. So he can, yeah, so he can stay close all to Austin. Right, all right, all right. Uh, That's a good if he shot. If he, would've, if he would've just threw it up, I'm pretty sure. You think he had time to make an extra pass? Yeah, it was he could have spent left. right if there, though. He's no, supposed he to shot that. Oh, he could have, oh, no, because he was. No, what I'm saying is if he would've shot that, Christian Wood right probably <laughs> would've had a rebound. Yeah, see, he didn't get enough, he didn't get enough lift. He didn't get enough lift. Yeah. He didn't get enough. I mean, Christian was the only other option, but like I said, it looks good on tape. It looks easy to make that play yeah, on that, tape. Bro, he, didn't that, get, he didn't get enough a, lift. There's no other play to make. No. Mm -hmm. But to the Cam and not to yeah, not passing the wood right there. No. Cam is the only play. That's the pinch down. It probably the fouler hit the ball out of bounds. It's a it's a bad pass if you try to give it to Christian. Christian, yeah. That, this, this, yeah, that play. It's that's a bad hit. play. That's the only Jason Kidd play. That's a uh, Jay Kidd play. That's and you got to dunk that bitch as <laughs> soon as he catches. it. So it's like Christian got slow. You throw that bitch to Cam. <laughs> and think about the personnel who's in the game. Like, of course you want Austin in that position, but Cam Reddish is in to shoot threes. And it should be pointed out, D'Lo was ejected earlier in the fourth quarter. They only had, like, I think six, six players available at that point. Because, it, that, because listen, if Darvin Ham did draw that play and that was the play... Um, that's how I know it was in the Darvin Ham play because there's no way if that's the play you're go you're gonna have your best three point shooter there, right? But he's gonna have his best shooter on his right hand because so, if he helps like he did, he can just dish it. But he he was just too far down. So you don't have this is a harder pa this is an easier pass. I'm going right, somebody goes and I can just hit yeah, it right for here, sure. right? Versus going and then now I gotta find you all. I gotta now I gotta find my best three point shooter. So when he's coming, he's looking like, okay, okay, now he's throwing it. He probably said, damn. <laughs> is that, but they down one, remember. Yeah, that's, down one. That's, so that's the play is for LeBron to just go get a bucket. Yeah, for, I mean, that's 100%. what I imagine it would be. I think, like Gil said, he had to pick his dribble up because Austin was in the wrong position, number one, and then Jimmy being able to poke at it. I, don't, I think that LeBron could have made a move ISO just at I the think time. Bronx should have held the ball for like a second. Yeah, a second more. more. Second. Yeah. He didn't even give Austin time to get to the corner because yeah. he just took off. Wait, can we watch it one more time, please, just for our own? Yeah. Cause, oh, yeah, it's eight seconds left. Yeah, yeah like nine uh, seconds. Oh, it's Wait, one, one second, two, then, yeah. But Austin yeah. had no sense of urgency okay. to get yeah, to that yeah. corner. Austin probably got to get there quicker, right? Yeah. Okay. But I don't think it was a bad play. I just don't think Brown was trying to get get a bucket right there. I don't think he no, was trying that, to get a bucket. No, that type of pass? I, I, no I, way. I, I, he was trying to pass it. Let me see. Yeah, he was. He see, already yeah. looking. See, yeah, that that um. That he drew. They it, drew that. Nah, that, <laughs> they drew that. That looked like nah, it, right? <laughs> that, that that defense. That defense. Um, he probably knew at that point he couldn't take Jimmy off the dribble, so he's trying to. It, it looks like he is trying to probe, and then that extra that extra body there kind of like think, made him more like he's. All right, and then okay, big hand. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. The stunt. He goat. makes that shot. It's the greatest play right, ever. Yeah. So it's always like that. It didn't yeah. look like. And it. I mean, LeBron has received this criticism throughout his career, making the right basketball play versus people wanting to be more aggressive and just try and get a bucket like other stars may have in that position. But this is his game. It's year twenty-one. He ain't changing. Let's talk a little bit about AD. So AD hurt his hip second quarter. Tried to come back out in the third quarter. Wasn't feeling right, so ended up missing the rest <laughs> of the game. So AD said he expects to be available for the Lakers' next game on Wednesday at the Rockets. That was after the game Monday. It remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, but this season, he's playing nearly 37 minutes a game, which is a career high. Mm. So the Lakers do a better job of managing AD and, as an extension of that, LeBron's minutes for the long-term success of the team this season. You're the success of the team if you manage their minutes? You're gonna. <laughs> what's the best of it? What's the best ability? You want to win. There's no managing <laughs> minutes. <laughs> what's the best ability though? I, listen, I guess the question either is: either win and do you, don't do you manage. Because LeBron's been playing a ton of fourth quarter minutes, much. like not coming out the game, and that's fine for now. But two, three months down the road, 
Is that gonna be an issue? Man, fuck that. Darvin Ham. YOLO. Darvin Ham, you better do <laughs> this is your job on the line. 48 minutes. <laughs> you better start calling timeouts the way you need them timeouts to be called. Yep, you the Stop trying hey, every three minutes is a TV timeout. Shit. Now you hey, you got timeouts, just just use Every them. minute and a half. Time out. Time out. <laughs> Time out. Time out. Let's yeah. go. Yep. Ten, ten, it was at 10.30. Time out. Take a rest. Mm-hmm. Nine minute TV timeout. There we go. <laughs> Get your ass up. 7.45. Time out. <laughs> Get your ass up. TV timeout. Get your ass up. It's time to go play, man. It's time to play. <laughs> well, you so I, hey, hey, you call your timeouts. Trust me, ain't nobody going to break no goddamn sweat. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. But you called it, though. AD it done got hurt already. That's why I'm just knowing the, the track record where AD is well we these just, past few seasons. We just had a whole conversation on handing the keys over, first option, second option, third. You think LeBron James is looking at this nigga like I'm about to be second or third to him? What did he do no. with his hip? What, what did he do with his hip? So apparently hip spasms. His hip belt, spasms? His, his, <laughs> belt, I think, his, his belt was too tight. His he took a knee from uh, Bam Adebayo, I believe. Yeah, his belt was too tight. Second quarter, he was shaking up, tried to come back out third quarter. He got a waist trainer. He so played with a waist do, trainer. All right, all right. Here, this is what we're going to do. Shot, please. No. He played with a waist <laughs> trainer. This is what we're going to do. Yeah, you're not rocking with the Lakers anymore? No, this is what we're going to do. Dwayne Wade, can you please DM this dude every item you had on your body to play in the NBA game? He had <laughs> hip pads, elbow pads, knee, chin pads, pads, thigh pads, rib pads, <laughs> vinyl pads, <laughs> back uh, booty pad. I mean, he had hamstrings. He had a neck brace. Just me. wearing a <laughs> cup. <laughs> eye patch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> An eye patch. Like you, you, like you couldn't hit Dwayne Wade without hitting some type of cushion. Something. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Come, just give him the list. Put the shit on, man. Put it on your knees, the back of your knees. Your, your, who the fuck is hitting me? Come on, man. You are the tallest dude on the... Did, what, what? Leave him alone. He gonna cry in the car. Hip... Leave him alone. You got hit in the hip? But yeah. one of these? Yeah. <laughs> it was a knee. You used to get hit with them shits all the time. A knee? <laughs> but a sharp knee to the hip. AD being consistently inconsistent. I mean, he's been doing well, he's too. He's been playing so good. He been playing, I know, man. It's he going to get better? Like he said, what, he already got a time. He said he was going to play Wednesday. He already got but it. Wednesday is not here. We'll take a couple games off. No game tonight, obviously. <laughs> uh, make sure y'all go vote. I don't know who, who who trying to get elected, but go ahead and get I'm it. I'm gonna take a couple games off. <laughs> I'll be back. But this is what we talked about even last season, and obviously after the trade deadline it changed. But you got games like this. They tricked one to the Magic. They're on four in the road this season. Lost to the Heat, who were struggling. Very winnable game. Now you got to go to Houston. Very winnable game. But you don't want to put yourself in a position where you trick off these games that you're counting on and not put your back against the wall later in the season and have to do the same shit that you did last year. It's over. I mean, it's right. climbing. This is, the, this is what I was, you know, complaining to the NBA for. <laughs> like, you know, that first game, you, fuck, you fucked us up, man. Goddamn, you're giving us <laughs> the champs early, man. Why you couldn't give us, like, you know, the, the, the magic first? Right, give us the set the tone for the. Right, give, us Memphis Gri- give us Memphis Grizzlies, man. Um, ring night, four straight like, Grizzlies why game. Why do they do that? Um, ring night. Said said that. They wasn't even in the finals. But that's what I'm saying. Nah, but I, I, that's what I said. I said that's how it usually works. You get hit, right, and then you you start losing the teams early. These teams start winning. They have all this confidence because they're playing bottom feeding teams too. Yep. Right. So you get this confidence early when you have a favorable schedule. Like you get. You get hit with that. Same thing with Suns. Think about think about two teams as champions. They both lost that first game, and then it's like, ah, yeah, you're struggling. Yeah, yeah, you're struggling. Yeah. And what ends up happening is later in the season when everybody get all their motor, now you're playing against harder teams trying to trying to rev that engine. And you know, I'm why can we get the Dallas Mavericks schedule? It seems like we have this combo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cakewalk, cakewalk, cakewalk. We have this combo. We know LeBron AD's relationship, clutch brothers to the end, but does it come a point now if you're the Lakers where you even start to ponder potential options? AD's only what? 30 what? I think 30. About to be 31. 31. Oh, yeah. He's really young. You can't even do Oh, my. They stuck. <clears throat> stuck what? With that money they just gave him? You st- I mean, 30, 31? He's 30. He'll be 31 in March. Told y'all he's going to come in there and do what the fuck he want to do. 
I want some bacon. You just gave him that 186. You, I, I, to be honest, I mean, at this point, he probably has the true power on the team. I do what the fuck I want. He has a true power. I mean, you're 31. <laughs> that do the fuck I want. You hear me? <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> fuck them kids, bro. <laughs> I say what the fuck I want. You hear me? Like, I mean, you're talking there's about... There's not much you can yeah, really you can't, do about I mean, it. There's, you can't trade them. It was that, it'd be a dumb trade. Mm-hmm. What if you trade him for it to be dumb? And be straight up. <laughs> straight up, Dilmore! And be straight up. Huh? Ooh, Dilmore get hung again. Hours. And be straight he's up. Because he, he's younger than Embiid, so. I mean, he, even through all his stuff, his issues, his injuries, he's still the be, one of the best yeah. at his position. Before so. that game Monday night, he was uh, on pay, he had the uh, highest odds to win Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, the way he was playing, you talked about him being uh, consistently inconsistent. There's no moving He bounced on. back with De several good games in a row. Def okay, so I think this is the problem. Defensively, he is consistent. Right? He's, he's consistent. Defense. That's what he does. We want, we want to be more offensively. Like We, want, we need... <laughs> I know you want to play defense. That's cool. But we need you more offensively. We need you more like Michael Jordan than... <laughs> Than Scottie Pippen style. Like, we need your Michael Jordan style. We need you to be more of the, you know, 24 to 30 type of dude every single. AD night. for MB, straight up. Straight up. Hey, send the fucking paperwork in. <laughs> AD for Giannis. <laughs> you hear me? Straight up. Let's AD do that. AD for Giannis, the contracts up. match. What? Ooh, that's Straight nasty. Not, they're, not, that's they, nasty. They're, they're not doing that. I'm that's just nasty. kidding. They're walking, not doing it. They're walking ain't stupid. I'm just pissing off uh, one of the producers of this show. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know he's lingering. I think they should consider it. Would yeah. you trade him for... And be AD, straight up. Katina... Oh. That would be... Would cool. you trade him for Carl Anthony Thompson? Towns, every Towns, I'm sorry. Gil! Oh I'm sorry. Hey. Call Anthony Towns. Call Anthony <laughs> Thompson. That's a motherfucker. You said something earlier in the show, too. Celebra celebritizing or celebritizing or something. <laughs> no, I didn't say nothing like that. <laughs> AD for Cat? Straight up? <laughs> mm. No. Absolutely Cat not. Cat and Rudy? Ooh, both of them? Just, just give us AD? Anthony Edwards. Yeah, give us Anthony Edwards. Nasty. But that, only, only that's in the, that's in AD to the. It's hard, man. He's thirty. That's definitely. Ant, thirty. I mean, thirty. He still has. And, and Anthony. Thirty. He still has seven dominant years. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get rid of that. You have to. I mean, obviously, I'm, and I'm just uh, kind of. I'm back. I'm back. Stuck. AD. We I'm good. Have, I'm having <laughs> y'all. You're gonna be here for a long time, AD. You good? MB straight up. I'll do it. But knowing no, every. Too lazy. I'm the Lakers. Damn, but the, he still got LeBron. Uh, the Lakers dilemma is such, right? You need AD and Bron to be out there, right? You need them to be playing 35 to 37 minutes a game, but you also know if you play AD 37 minutes a game... This is gonna happen. That, mm -hmm. Man, no, because none of his injuries is fucking like... It's, they, they're not considered work-related. Day-to-day, <laughs> <laughs> day-to-day. No, it's not, it's not like he's taking like some real hits in the game. It'd be some bullshit. Pinky toe. Like he done shot the ball all right. He done shot the ball, turned around, got poked in the eye. Like, he God done, damn. He done tried to shoot he got, me in my pinky toe. He got need in his <laughs> he in his shoot hip. I've never seen that. Like, oh! like, he ain't playing against Draymond Green. How the fuck you get hit in your hip? Come on, man. Bam out of bio. I know, but your hip, it's not. So let's, on, let's talk about the other team in Los Angeles. <laughs> James Harden made his Clipper debut in the Garden on Monday night. <clears throat> but the Clipper Big Four took a big L <clears throat> to the Knicks in the Big Apple. Uh, Harden was rusty in his over first points. game action of the season. Huh? Over points. Over assists. He got over assists too. Under I'm about to give y'all love. I'm about to give y'all love. Under shot attempts. He did that. He said that. Shot attempts. I didn't say shot attempts. Yeah, you yes, did. You did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. did. <laughs> you said over I shot attempts. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what y'all say to my ear. <laughs> you People lie every day. Attempts. People lie every day, B. Thank I you. thought he was going to shoot the rock more. I blame Ty Lu. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Uh, motherfucker want to facilitate. Uh, <laughs> so Harden was fussy, uh, rusty in his first game action of the season after missing most of training camp all the preseason with the Sixers. 17 points, 6 assists, and 31 minutes of action. Did a lot of his damage with that second unit. So like I said, Gil, you predicted Harden would go higher on the 5.5 assists and the underdog pick him. Would you say he'd go higher on the points, the 14.5? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, me. 
I fucked up. Yeah, you did. <laughs> That's why, don't listen to me for any underdog fantasy advice. <laughs> or maybe I'm just lying to y'all because I want y'all to lose. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, you asked me about somebody the other day, and I told you something, that I, right when I got a car, I was like, no, nah, he's not going to do that tonight. <laughs> I think it was like Will Levis or somebody in a, in a, <laughs> a football game. Do that oh, no, Derek, it was Derek Hammer. Like, oh, he, yeah, he's not going to do that tonight. Yeah, I lost, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to hit you, but, you know, y'all be fucking with me, so I had to get y'all back. So after the game, Harden gave an honest assessment of his performance. He said, I feel kind of weird out there, not really having a preseason game or an opportunity to participate in a full training camp. None of that was just out there basically winging it. So uh, thoughts on Harden's first game (laughs) with the Clippers. I guess that's fair. That's the last six years out there winging it. (laughs) Shit. I mean, we call it a system, but it's winging it. (laughs) That's winging it, for sure. I mean, shit, James... You the one didn't go to training camp and didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the fuck are we talking about here? Your own actions, What the sir? fuck are we like, talking about? <laughs> Nigga, you, you the one didn't. You did it. <sighs> I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm it's going to take him a Come few on, games, James, though. Stop it. You look, he we look, know that. We knew that. He looked decent. He looked like I, I liked his movement. I liked the way he, you know, he was out there getting a shot off. And, you know, I think even defensively, he looked like he wanted to th- kind of just play. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was ready to hoop. I like that. It's just meshing them, them four together, trying to figure out when Russ has the ball in the post, I just seen a lot of standing on the weak side, which is weird to see all of them just standing on the weak side and no one's moving. And it's like the three of them that's standing, it's like they don't got the ball. And they're watching Russ do his thing. Where's, okay, like on your coaching staff, some of you guys, like I've been doing breakdowns. On your coaching staff, what the fuck are y'all teaching when players don't have the ball, Stan. When they don't have the ball, you're not teaching them to like move, cut. You got Green. like I tell, tell all my kids, listen. If a guy turns his head, <coughs> cut. cut him every time. Mm-hmm. Front, cut him back. If he's if he's coming too low, right, butt to the baseline, cut in front of him. Yep. If he's too high, you know, back door. Play like. Like, do something. Exchange on the weak side. Yes, up Where's down. the movement? They just be sitting there. Bro, it's so weird. And then half of the offense now, they're standing damn near by half court. Absolutely. Like, the fuck I'm going to pass it to you over there? What you going to do with it? <laughs> Get it? Right? Pump fake? <laughs> it's like, no one's going for the pump fake yeah. out there. Then you're going to dribble up, no shot, give it back to me to go back up. The d- no. Put you guys, put yourselves in, like, shooting position. Now I see why Sacramento was as high as they were last Number year. Number two, yeah. They know how to move. They move yep. all After the ball, without they the ball. They know how to move without the ball, so they're going to get buckets that you're, you're not even accounting for. Every other team, they're just sitting there, everyone just standing. They're trying to go five-out offense with five-out defense, like Shell. Yep. How, you know how hard it was to score on Shell defense? Bro, what? That's... <laughs> what? Uh, like, you can't get off until you get a stop. Ah, <laughs> get a stop. Ah, <laughs> you got to get a stop. Right there. Right there. We did that Co- yesterday. You're helping the defense. Yeah, coach, can somebody cut around. through? Nope. Nope. Nobody can cut through. <laughs> <laughs> deny, deny, <laughs> deny. Deny, deny. at the elbow. And that's what this, this looks like, man. Like, yo, y'all got to move without the ball. Bro, that's why I look so... That's why I'm critical of the talent today because when you see that... They just standing on the weak side. Nobody's doing, not even exchanging. Usually, when we like say Gilbert has his ISO on the weak side, we're we gotta exchange yes. just to move the defense. Yes. Like I want to be able to say if my man's the low guy, he's gonna be and Gilbert drives and he gotta take take the, the charge first. on the weak side block. I'm gonna move up as high as I can just to make sure that he gotta make he gotta be oh shit I, I'm supposed to be low yep. but I'm going high so he gotta stay with like you gotta play a game but there's none of that. There's none of that, and it's it's frustrating to watch because now players who can play one-on-one basketball are limited. It's harder now. Like like when I was talking about Jason Tatum, right? You, that's hard. That is hard. You're it's that is hard basketball. What you're doing, that mean, you have to sit here and do all these moves because you have the ball on the wing, right? There's a guy at the top and a guy in the corner. Right, so that means there's help defense on both sides. So that means you have to jig a little bit here, go here, pit, pit, then step back <laughs> in this little space. When if one guy just cuts through, you can get him with the back. If not, you have all this new space wow. now. Wow! Now you can just straight line him. There's because the, the only thing that's making you change direction is the help defense. Yep. It ain't your guy. It's the help defense where you got to go 
Because you got to half-ass go to get him to move here. So you I got to help. I got yeah. to help. I got to help. Bring him this way. Yeah. Bring him I, this way. I, I'm right here. That's, that's how I played. Like, I, I'm on the ISO. As soon as my guy uh, cuts through or exchange, that means the defense that was there has to relocate. Come on, man. As soon as he's in the middle of his relocate, got to go. And yeah. I'm talking to you on the weak side. I'm saying, hey, my man, not, hey. Yep. He, he not, he helping, he not helping, he helping, he not helping. Yep. Hey, if he's helping, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna knock, I'm gonna knock him dead. Swing it over here, okay, I got him. He's not helping. Not help, like they, like it just, everybody just sitting there just. Yeah. I mean, I see my teammate, if she's on the wing, I'm in the corner, I see her trying to go, I just cut right through the baseline. <laughs> they don't see you ever. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then sometimes I'll get that shot because my man stays Thanks. to help, and then now I have the shot. Like they don't like do, it's cut. It's so like it's just, so it's easy. like so easy. Like the deep, think about it, y'all. When you're on the ISO, your team mate who's playing the the guy who's playing defense, he don't know what his teammates are doing. Nope. So he don't know where to push him. Only you can see. So if your guys cut through, eh, gone, boom. He's reacting to what what you're doing. So you need to learn how to cut back door, slide, fake like you about to set a screen, slice off like what? You know what this sounds like? This sounds like college practice. <laughs> right? When you're doing shell drill and what he's saying is like even offense, defense aside, if the defense is doing it the right way, we're saying, I got your help, I'm in the middle, mm -hmm. I'm on the nail, mm -hmm. I, make him drive, make him drive, which is gonna frustrate him yep. because now offensively we gotta talk. Cut through, I'm cutting through, cutting through. All right, I got your pick, right side, right side, come and pick right, all that kind of stuff. Now you got a team going back and forth in the practice. It's like both sides locked in. When you go play in a game, you know that these teams are either going to be prepared for that or not. And if they not, we're going to eat their ass up. Mm -hmm. We're going to eat their ass up because we know what we're doing, but they don't teach that no more. As what we just seen, everybody's sitting on the weak side with the Clippers. We're talking about the Clippers, some of the most talented sitting. players on, in, in the world, on one team sitting on the weak side. So, so Ty Lue talked a lot about sacrifice, uh, and all the players in that big four are going to have to make some sacrifices this season for the team to get where they need to be. Paul George said he coming into the season he was going to be on his bully shit, mm -hmm. has been doing that. Mm -hmm. Monday night, 2 for 11 from the field, 10 points, I mean, 11 34 shots. minutes. 11 shots, I mean, that's... <sighs> 11 isos is very hard. Right? That is 11 ISOs versus <coughs> a few back doors, a few <laughs> Paul Pierce cuts, right? You know, that, like, think about the weak side. Well, you know what the weak side defense used to be so scared of? Duck ins. Yes, sir. <laughs> the worst. So, the duck ins. Because you, you're helping, right? You're sitting here helping, and you don't know, like, they're going to swing you here, and you just got pinned. Big man. Big man just pins you because you're helping. And they like, all right, he's helping too much. We're going to pin him here or we're going to duck in. Like, the, the offense knew how to play without the ball. Yes, These right. guys are training so much with the ball in the mm -hmm. summer that they don't know how to move when they don't have it. That give me goosebumps, bro, because that's just like, that's what we're missing in the game. Like, if I'm a point guard, I'm, I'm, I'm training like a shooting guard in the summer. If, I, if I'm the main point guard in the, I'm training like I'm training like I'm Clay Thompson. If I'm Clay Thompson, I'm going to be training like I'm Curry. Or Dan. Like you do the opposite so you can fill the voids of each other. Absolutely. 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 Like watching, watching, watching Golden State play is actually beautiful basketball. Man. Yeah. Yeah. They never nope. stop moving. They're, I mean, Never like for each other. The flare screens on the weak side. Flare screens, like it's like you're just sitting like, man, this is beautiful basketball. We had it in college, freelance bass, freelance. We called it three game mm -hmm. pass, freestyle, do your thing, play together. It's yeah. like pick up when you really was trying to get some bump, right? Mm -hmm. Like we not just out here on some one on one. Yeah. We actually out here pinned down, yeah. weak side. Everybody's really bumping. So I could see it. I mean, it's 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 one of those things where you 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 yearn for it as a as a hooper. To be able to go out there and free flow. I mean, I think that's free game. How, how we play. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. don't have no play. Y'all play, play like three game shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, like there's like there's there's action. Like there's even even when there's actions. a two man game, like two man game. These guys have a two man game, and then there's three people on the baseline just sitting there mm -hmm. tripping. Like man, that's a three man <laughs> game. Like y'all faking the offense, out a switch here, back cut. Back. You're playing. You're just fucking doing nothing over there. But do that's, something. Yeah. But don't do nothing, <laughs> bro. And then shot go up. One of y'all get back. 
they're just sitting, like there's guys sitting at the, man, I've seen guys sitting at the half, the half court mark. Like, why does your guy guard you out there? He's sitting there like, your man is helping. You're so far away from the shot. Get to the three-point line. Get to the actual three-point line. Like, get to the three-point, like right here, stand right there, right? So if your man helped and he helped too much, when I pass it to you, you can actually shoot. Right. You don't have to, try to <laughs> take two dribbles to get close to the free throw line. He, now he got it back. <coughs> it just... Yeah. That's why that's why watching Denver is so amazing. Because when Joker, Joker has the ball, cut, they're moving. Yeah, cut, 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 back door slash cut. lob it. So it's the Warriors and the Denver that, the, but and, Warriors and, and, and Sac because they about, all have yep. willing passers. So you talk about the Warriors' beautiful basketball. Talking about the Nuggets, but and just looking at this Clippers side, how tough is that on the defense? And not only have to guard that, but now I'm guarding that all game, getting tired by the fourth quarter. Versus now I'm doing this shit with the Clippers, where you're just gonna stand in the corner. I really it's, it's, shit. It, what I'm saying is like think about if if you're guarding if you're guarding a main player and you have help defense on both sides and no one's cutting as a defensive player it's you can zone. pick up we it's zone it. we zone it. this is on yeah. <laughs> chilling right? nobody's moving yeah. all you all you all your job is do not let them straight line you Period. that's it don't let them straight line you yeah. that's your only goal Versus, oh shit, I gotta really lock down because there's no help. Right. I know I got help on the base, I know I got help, but then just don't straight line me. Right, right. And those used to be our whole assignment for defensively when I was playing in the league was mm -hmm. don't get straight line drive, don't let the ball go middle. Yep. That's it. Don't straight. And if you're at the top, I need to hear left or right. Yeah, push them left or right. Yep. <laughs> I need to hear, big man, what you doing? If you don't hear nothing, straight I down. I gotta stay, stay, stay front from front. Stay in front, don't foul. Play, with, play defense without fouling. Like that's what I said. I'm an offensive player. And that's, I think, I think sometimes when, because I'm an offensive player, people think that I don't know defense. Understand <laughs> this. I have to know defense like an expert to yes. manipulate the mm -hmm. defense. Yes, we got to be the right? best. I have to know the rules to a T. Yes. To know how to score against it. So I know if I'm below the baseline, I mean, if I'm below the free throw line, you're going to have to push me baseline because your defense is set up to... To, to go over. So I'm not going to go below the free throw line until I'm ready to go because I know your guy's not there, right? If I'm above the free throw line, you have to play me straight up with no going middle, right? So once I'm going, so now I'm manipulating how the defense is because you don't know. Man. You just know if I get to a certain spot, you have to shift. So, so I'm going to go. Certain spot, you shift, I'm taking off. Soon as you do this, I'm gone. So I have to know defense the best to score on it. You know you cold when you literally analyze the game from a, how would I guard this? Mm -hmm. This is where the, like you ain't, to me it ain't never been about accolades and all of that. It's been what you know about the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. Like what do you know about scoring, being a real scorer? Like can you prove it, can you show it? So for me, I've always been that guy to collaborate with other scorers and shooters and see how they shoot and what they focus on and all of that kind of stuff. I think it's the most important part of the game, but when you are a scorer, you have to know the defense. Like, that's a pride thing for us, too. It's like, I need to know how many counters I need for tonight. So, Coach, mm -hmm. I need us to go through the pick-and-roll progression all the way through. Mm -hmm. All the different coverages, we need to know. Yeah. Because I need to now assess my game around how they're going to play us tonight. But if you have Coach it, now my preparation is going to be, oh, I got to go into my bag when I need to in real time yeah. instead of knowing that, all right, they're going to double me at some point off this pick-and-roll at the top. Yeah. I'm going to be... <laughs> I got two passes here. But if we're not prepping on it and I don't know about it, man, it's, it's, it's different. So you guys, let's just pretend like you, Ty Lu. How are you approaching this Clippers offense with this big <laughs> four to get the most out of this team? Um, like, I, I'm going to have, I'm going to have concepts, right? And I have four, I have four special type players, meaning for you guys to, do what you're doing. If you still want to be on beast mode, you need this. You need, we need to be moving faster. So that means we need to get the ball out. We should be trying to score 130. Yeah. If you guys all want to have your numbers, we need to be trying to score 130. So that means we're going to, be, we're going to have to get in shape a little bit more. When we have the ball, which every one of y'all got the ball, Push the ball. we're pushing. Drag it. We're pushing it. Drag it. Drag move. <laughs> Cut. Like, I'm dragging it. Now, you guys looking at me back door. All day. If not, you guys hanging too much. Come get the hand Dribble off. Hand like, off. Yep. like we didn't even have, like, it was part of our office, but players knew. Shawty, if, I'm, if I come to you and then I go and then 
turn my back and then spin back and to you. You knew back. You know his back door. <laughs> back door automatic. Boom, boom. Okay, his. He has a guy that's over aggressive. All right, I'm about to back door. Boom. Yep. Now if he's sagging, hand off. Yep. Like it's, it's it's read. One, two, three. It's read. You have to be able to read. So Ty Lu, you need to be really telling these guys read and play and move. Man. Do not stand. You're the easy. You're standing like trees. That's the easiest thing to guard. Is a plant. I ain't got to do nothing. Right. Woo. Like a defensive player. Right. I ain't got to guard it. <laughs> Hey, you just play, you just here for defense. Huh? <laughs> I got your help. I got your help. <laughs> I got a non-shooter over here. <laughs> but Lex, Lex, you know, just like I know, that's just called when a play, when a coach tells you be a basketball player. Yeah. This is gonna take some time. They have to get used to playing on the same team. So yeah, and this is one game. One game. Five. But I said they ain't gonna get it together until after All Star break. It's gonna take a little bit. They all that's the advantage for them. They're all basketball players at the end of the day. Yeah. I think at that point when they get it, they're like, all right, we're And they need to watch film. Yeah. So I look, think they need to see it. One see game, it. but they did have four days off heading into this game, so you would expect it to be a little bit more tightened up. But obviously they've got the rest of the season to figure it out. So well we James gonna play. use that excuse as I ain't have the training camp, I'm trying to warm up. So we're gonna give him twenty <laughs> games. Man, 20 games. Give him twenty games. Right, and after everybody that, at that point got twenty games. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's keep this thing moving uh, and hit y'all with some hibachi time. Hey. Hibachi time. OJ. Okay. Uh, so some, some thought the Sixers would struggle without Harden in the aftermath of the blockbuster trade, but the MB Maxi duo looks solid so far. We're going to add some context in a second, but let's just talk about MB. He dropped 48 on the Wizards Dome in only three quarters. Wow. Including 29. Okay, I'm confused here. What are the Wizards doing? Why, why, him and, why him and Ben Simmons never did pick and rolls like this? Hmm. 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 Here we go, big fella. Absolute beast mode. It has to be mentioned, though, it, it is the oh, Wizards. See, that's like, like mm. moving. Like, look at that. I love that's when he moving. plays like that. Huh? I love when he plays that's like that. That's what I said, that's moving. He's got like a little motor. It is the Wizards, and they have been the team <laughs> that people padded their stats on so far this season. But he did drop 48, so you got to give him his love 29 and three quarters. Sixers won their fifth straight game, 5-1 and one this season, tied for first in the Eastern Conference. But now here's the context. Uh, loss to the Bucks, I believe, in the season opener. Five wins have come against the Raptors twice, Blazers, Suns, and Wizards. Ah. Why we couldn't get that at the league? So the question for you guys, is, is the Sixers five-game winning streak fool's goal? No. It's called perfect scheduling. <laughs> <laughs> Because they could have, they could have very, like with all that James Harden drama, they could have lost those games. Mm -hmm. but they tightened up and won those games because they they needed to. They win in the games they're supposed to win. That's that's all you can. That they're winning the games they're supposed to win. Like you said, they write it up before the before the season starts. <coughs> they know which games they should win. Yep. We should take these first seven. I, I guarantee. I guarantee you, if you ask the coach and staff. What did you think your record would be right now? I guarantee you this the one we have. Yeah. Because there's no way you looked at that schedule and was like, mm, all right, Bucks. <sighs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. You know, maybe. maybe you know. Yeah. But win. Yeah, they're trying to win. Yeah. Uh, they, they, you know, they lost so many players. Well, win. <laughs> win. They we, giving we, away we, wins. <laughs> they giving away wins. The fuck with, what does the Wizards got? Win. We got. It's, it's. Who they got next though? I was going to get to that. Give me one second. Yeah. So, Celtics. Ooh. Tomorrow. Loss. <laughs> In Boston? It don't matter. In Philly. I'll give you the next five. So Boston been fucking up. At home versus Boston. At Detroit on Friday. We'll win. Two games versus the Pacers next Sunday and Tuesday. Win, win. <laughs> <laughs> then back at home versus Boston Wednesday. Loss. <laughs> Win, win. Win, win. Win, win. <laughs> nigga. Oh, shit, it's about to be 10-3. For real. For real. Let's go. MVP. <laughs> but you see how scheduling, like, puts you in the forefront just that fast. Yeah. You got to take care of business, though. That's it. If you take care of business, you can end up 10-2. Yeah, 10-2. Like, if you get Boston, if you get Boston... This this first game at home, which is going to be hard because Boston they know how to play Embiid. He's yep. not he. They've had the the, the what's the, but if you can, but going into the game like with the the spirit you guys have, this is a winnable game. Yeah, yeah. Right. This is not you know this is a this is a winnable game at home. What do you five game winning streak? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is a winnable game. <clears throat> For sure. For sure. 
You know, so you can come out of here like you, in their minds, we split this Boston series. Yeah. 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 So if they win one of these next two against that's the it. Celtics. You know, that's it. You're just they trying good. to split it. Trying to yeah. split. Yep. And does that basically give, I don't want to say more, but that team some now wiggle room, keep it beat happy. Look, Joel, we're killing right now, yeah. but. Ten, listen, ten, you know, starting off, starting off right now. We don't need no Harden. Yeah, starting off 10 2, 10 3, I mean. Feeling good. You're good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. And it's the beginning. Everybody's happy. Everybody's feeling good. You no. Know? But that's how you get your good average up this is- early on. <laughs> you get some good early yeah, points up. And you just maintain for the rest of the season, nigga. You good. <laughs> maintain. And you got to talk about how important those first 10, 20 games are it is, man. for a team. And just like you said, winnable games, but they could have easily tricked off some of those games and not been 5-1 and one right now. And then we'd be having a different conversation mm-hmm. on this couch. So interesting to see that it's worked out like that for him. But let's head back to the Western Conference. Got to talk about Ant-Man. Mm. So before the season, Anthony Edwards changed his jersey number <coughs> and predicted his game would take a leap getting his favorite number back. Mm. And Ant-Man has lived up to that promise so far this season. Wait. Gosh. No. I don't like it. No. You don't like it either. What's the issue? Can he do the Hmm? Isn't that the ticket number? Nah. Yeah, it was for Boston. Oh. Yeah, not for that. Yeah, he's 21. <laughs> oh, yeah, 21. I'm tripping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dumb. Relax. Relax. Friend, this is how dumb I am. The jersey is right there. <laughs> <laughs> the jersey is right, right there. Yeah, damn dumb. Yeah, <laughs> Autograph. He autographed. It looked like he folded it, so it's got no, no, the yeah, double. I folded it because I, I was. So you got long. you got two KG autographs. I said the jersey right there, and I'm asking that stupid ass question. That's okay, not, said, did he wear that number five? <laughs> 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 okay. My bad. But, my but bad. Monday night, and dropped 38 on the Celtics, including eight points in overtime. Came up big on both sides of the ball. He's averaging 28. Seven and five this season, 52% from the field, 47% from three. Mm. And the MJ memes are meme Oh, oh Lord. He has risen. Come Shout on. out, Bart. That's not Look funny. At the <laughs> <laughs> he has risen. Uh, Aaron made his first all star team last season, looking like an all NBA selection is in his future if he keeps playing this way. But, you know, ESPN came out with their rankings before the season. Obviously, we felt a certain way about him. Is Ant Man a top ten player in the league? What did they rank him? Hmm? What did they? What was I'm the just, rank? I'm just thinking about all the names. I'm just saying. Just look at the league the right now. He top fifteen. You want to go sure. through? He top fifteen. And I feel like he'll make an All NBA team, but you know, to, to keep this combo it's spicy. A lot of good players. It, it definitely is, but he was thirteen. He was thirteen. Oh yeah, top fifteen. I think that's decent. I mean, top you know, 10. top. T- Top 13, he got to be better than three more players right now. I'm pretty sure he's better than three of those players right now because, you know, the way he's... Tatum, season. Booker, uh, Bill. Was Bo- I don't think Booker, they, I don't think they had Booker as top Booker 10. Booker was 11. Yes, mm-hmm. he's 11. Oh, he's 11. So he hasn't been there, so yep. Jimmy, he's he played better there. than Jimmy, so he had 11 yep. right now. Ja, who was Ja? Ja, he had 435, yeah. yeah. So he had 11 right now because two players... Luca, Steph... Five and six. Who who else? Who else is hurt? That's not playing. <laughs> or who else is? AD maybe. No, I'm AD was nine, nine, nine ten. All NBA like, is by position, or it's it's positionless. Oh, it. Anybody. It's anybody, anybody now? now? So who who else is left? We already got. We got him at eleven. Okay. I like Ant Man at thirteen, man. I mean, but he's, AD. KD, AD, KD, AD, LeBron, all top ten. Yeah. Who else? Tatum. Tatum? No. Curry? No. Tatum, Curry, Luca. Tatum, Curry, Luca, Luka, Giannis, and Joker. And B. Joker. Yeah, that was the first six. So, so only basically Jimmy Butler and uh, I think Booker? I good at 11. Yeah, like Jimmy, Bo- Jimmy and Booker? I think he's over Jimmy. Oh, There's probably somebody Jimmy? in there. Yeah, yeah and D-Book is not playing. He could be over Jimmy. I could put him over Jimmy. Yeah. That's not playing. I mean, D-book one is not playing, playing so you got to put him there right now. I could put him over uh, Booker. He played one game. Ant Man over Booker. Yeah. Right now? Right That's now. What I'm right now no, I'm just playing. saying. Wait, just, even from the Tatum, summer. Tatum's not even from the ten? summer shit. No, Tatum's not Okay. Tatum. That, okay. I was, looking for the U- take, I was looking for the top 10. Coming off the USA, USA shit, right? Let's say after that, not now. I'm taking Ant Man over Booker. Ooh. Yeah, did you see what Booker was doing in the playoffs? No, I'm not even saying. I'm just saying I'm leading just saying. up to the, to the to FIBA's. Mm hmm. 
But I mean, but but yeah, we have to count B Booker's last sighting was against Denver Nuggets. I know. And that sighting was about what, 33, 34. <laughs> but if we compare this season, he only played what two games, one game. Mm -hmm. But that's why I said right one now I put him in front because he ain't been playing. I think he's more talented. On both ends. Ant Man. He's a better defender, I think. He's he. he Devin he's Booker, he, he's defender. still young. He ain't he's there yet, but he's gonna get there. Devin Booker very only underrated. played two games, but he's averaging 32. Eight rebounds, 11 assists. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> two games, though. Two games. But that's what I said. I only put him there because he ain't playing. Yeah. 32 on the Warriors. All right, D-Book. Yeah, I ain't Shit. Not, I don't that's know. Not the Spurs, We're not scared of that. We're not scared but that's of that. What I'm saying. <laughs> We're not scared of that. I'm only putting him there because D-Book ain't playing. He ain't hit the game minimum. If, if, if D-Book All was, NBA if came out today, Ant would be up. He got to hit the game minimum. But if, if D-Book was playing, then I'm not, not going to put him in front of you. No. And, and, right. and, and, and has the minimum to be uh, Damn, man. D -book. We're not scared of that, though. But look. I'm just saying, Ant-Man not scared. He ready to challenge that. At that same age, man, you the motherfucker had his or younger had 72. That's a different type of Facts. I think Ant-Man do for one of them games. I think Ant-Man do for one. I don't know, so if, he can, I don't know, I don't know if he can do that. What? Not in many. So we got an Ant-Man. Not with them team. We got an oh, Ant-Man related OnlyFans question from KSavage21. Mostly fans. Mostly fans. Does Ant, fans have a, uh, does Ant Edwards have a chance of winning MVP in his career? If so, how many do you think he will win? If he do win, win, it's going to be one. One. I mean, ain't <laughs> the way this league is, is, is hard. It's going to be hard, hard to win, too. to get too. more than one, yeah. Um, everybody, listen, everybody, every, every top player has um, a chance to win it if you have the right team around you that you guys are going to try to win, you know, because it's, it's based off of winning. So when Dirk won it, he wasn't close to winning one until the year he had, you know, got all those pieces. He was the best player on it. So, you know, everyone has a chance to win the MVP if you have your talent plus the team, you know, winning. Mm -hmm. It has to do with it. You know, it's another story if you just no, came off. It's of not going to happen with this team that he's on right Minnesota. now. Uh, not, not, with the not, team in Minnesota. not in Minnesota. No. Not in Minnesota. No, baby. <laughs> we had Pat Bev on this season one finale, and he thought that Ant would eventually dip. Obviously, Timberwolves fans weren't feeling that. I like the squad, though, man. I'm going to be honest. You know, Bruce Brown this summer said they gave the Nuggets their hardest test in the postseason. Oh, they did. We talked a few days ago about potentially trading Gobert or trading Cat. They've got number one defense in the league right now. And a 4-2, and two, they gave the Celtics and the Nuggets both their first loss of the season. Let's talk a little bit about Rudy Gobert. Uh, he's putting up 12 points, 11 rebounds, two blocks a game, anchoring that defense. Yeah, he hates. Do we don't still hate. don't do we still feel like the Go Bear trade I don't, I don't, was, was I, that I don't, bad? I don't. I don't. I don't uh, it was pretty good. Yeah, I'm just asking you. What I'm saying is so it's so yeah. hard to evaluate a defensive player today because what is the defensive rating? That's why I said we have two defensive players in one team and they can't even stop nobody. Now you have Rudy Gobert, who in the playoffs he can't <laughs> stop nobody, right? He can't. But is he guarding, like, is he a, a great help side defender or a great on-ball defender? They're the number one defense in the league. No, I'm, I'm talking about Memphis has two um, MVP, uh, defensive MVP award winners on their team, and they can't stop anybody. You know what I mean? They're ranked, what, 18 now? You mean the team can't stop nobody or those players? Those can't? players, they're part of the team. You got two of them. One guy, one Scottie Pippen. Huh? One guard, one pose. One guy, well, of course. <laughs> shit, you should be locking down anybody. Everybody walking through y'all. Yeah, but that don't mean, that, don't mean that the team gonna get that kind of percentage. It's you gotta, still got to be a cohesive unit. You still got to play together. But that's, but that's what I'm saying. So you have a team that don't have many defensive players on it, but as a team, they're great defensive. Well, like, like you said, the most important thing for any team is to have your front line to be guys you're scared of, to go in there and try to lay, lay the ball up. You got Gobert and you got Cat down there. But, they, but Cat's not a defensive player. Of course he is. I mean, compare, but, but but as long as everyone does their job, like make don't straight, all of don't them. Don't straight they, line. Yeah. Make sure we help. That's what makes them a good team. Yes, they got offense. I mean, defense. They've got athletic, a squad. athletic guys Ooh, that play defense, right? They just don't got no offense. Can That's I ask you? But, but this is a real question, right? When Boston was great at defense, right, all these years, 
Was Tatum a great defensive player? Mm-mm. No, right? Brown wasn't a great <coughs> defensive player, right? Al Horford was slow as hell, so their team concept was so great that you didn't even know who was actually bad at defense. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's what we were like. Talking people about didn't realize that. Like, yeah. that. when you took the individual like the players, thing. like, think about it. Tony Parker wasn't great at defense. Nope. Ginobili was not Bad. great at defense. Bonner wasn't Bad. great at defense. <laughs> but their they rating as a team yeah. was a great defensive team. It's the concepts. It's the concepts. Yep. Like, like, so when people say, oh, you was bad at defense, I was great on ball. Yep. Chasing motherfuckers around screens, not my thing. <laughs> I overhelp. See, and I'm the opposite. I, like, I, I was an overhelper. He was I an overhelper. I always know the play before the play. And yeah, I, my nigga's yeah. back door. Or, mm-hmm. I was yeah. a ball, that's what I said. I'm a ball watcher. Me like, too. <laughs> like, like my defense. Hey, yo. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, when, when someone says he's not good at defense, you have to try to think about what they're saying. Like, he's a horrible on ball defender. On ball. He's a great help defender. Yep. Right? He's a, uh, this guy is great at roaming. He's great at netting. He's great at this. He's very bad at on ball. So if you post him up, like some people go at him because he can't play on ball defense. He going to foul you. Yes. <laughs> he going to foul He's you. He's great at helping his teammate defensively. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Those are two different ways of judging. That's why I always wanted to, how are you judging these guys on defense? What, what is the defensive rating? What is the algorithm you're using? Because some of these players aren't great defensive players. Like when you're talking about defense by himself, yep. locking one a guy up. One, yeah. He is horrible at Trash. that. Trash. He's tr- <laughs> he gets beat every single every time, time off the every first time. dribble, every not time. even turning him. He can't guard. One line. He's <laughs> great at help defense. Yep. Strong as fuck. Strong. Great at netting. Mm-hmm. Great at talking. Pointing. Yep. Faking it. <laughs> yep. yeah. Jason, hey, yeah. This is Jason Terry. He said, look, I said, hey, hey, how's it even? He's like, I- I'm not, I'm horrible at defense. But what I do is I fake it. I pick up full court, right? I'm not trying to steal the ball. I have no skills. But I'm picking up full court, <laughs> picking up, turn him, turn him. Like, he, I'm just making sure he don't beat me off the dribble. Turn him. That's it. Turn, help, help, help. Push the baseline, push the I'm just talking. Hey, listen, half the defense is just talking. Hey, but, it, hey but to be real. That's it. Because you even see this at the talking high school level. Dudes don't communicate shit. No, Screen no. coming, don't say Laid shit. Let out. a dude get killed. That's the worst shit like, ever. If you just talk, when you're a post talk, player, don't talk. call out a screen. Think, think about, just man, just say what you mother, see is happening to the dude yeah. who doesn't That's know it's you. coming. I got a no, concussion push, off that yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 Push some left. Push call out the screen. Push some left. Push right. I got the down screen. I got the down screen. I'm sitting there like, I got the down screen. Help left. Help left. I'm on the block. I got five fouls. Boy, he better not bring him down this way. <laughs> two nine, two nine, two nine. All, all two nine. I got the two nine. I'm two nine. In. How important is that to the defensive side? Because you can cover up a lot of defensive deficiencies. Oh, and that's well, just that's by I'm using your voice. What? Players like Gobert are so important because they they see everything, so they have to be the loudest on the court. They pick. Yeah. They have to be. <laughs> <laughs> in picky lip. But that's why. Drake, that's why. That's why no one could take take advantage of Steph Curry. Like they wanted to because you have Draymond Green back. Yeah, Absolutely. just like I was watching the play where constantly. Dray was um, um, someone empty out and um, they were gonna do a handoff with Curry and he's like, just keep riding him over, make sure he don't go baseline. Yep. Because there's no help back there. Clay dumped out, so just keep keep him coming up front, keep him coming up front. So that's when Curry adjusted and then you bring him up up top across the screen so he couldn't go back door. Yep. Right. Those are the things you 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 need to stop you from playing. You know from being a, a bad defense or getting exposed. Yep. That's why I always said I attack the best defensive player because no one is in position to help him. Yep. No one okay, helps Superman. Mm-hmm. Nope. That's right? That's true. No one helps Superman. Everyone helps the civilian. Yep. A bad defensive player is a civilian. But Superman like, need help too sometimes. I always like catching, like, we would joust back and forth if, like, we were to have a coaching situation, right? Mm-hmm. I'm... I'm on the same do that and yep. be like, oh shit. Now we gotta end up giving the ball to him, shooting a three every time. <laughs> Just think about it. And I hate it because that's the fun part to me. It's the yep. planning and the adjusting and the strategizing. It's like when you gotta do your counters, that's the best part of the game. It's going to your counter because it's like, oh y'all, y'all know what we're doing. You still can't fucking stop it. That's what I said. Like when I was coaching AAU, it was so easy. Like I told the kids, I was like, look, if he's on this side of the court, push him, push him baseline. Pushing baseline, big man. They're pushing him baseline. So you're going to already be, they're coming. We're pushing to you. All my guards, don't reach. Right. Just if the big man steps up, get his guy. From there, we're just going to all overload. It cut out half the mistakes defensively. Man. Just, hey, 
on this side of the court, keep him baseline. If he's in a corner, which I don't understand who's teaching basketball, <laughs> if your man catch the ball in the corner, he should not be able to dribble it back out. At no point. Oh, keep him. There's no fucking way your guy catches in the corner and he's allowed to dribble the ball back out to run off. Soon as he catches it, boom, cut him off. Push him back baseline. He should stay on the sideline. You got the sideline defense. You got the baseline defense. Your ass is the defense. And then you have your guy who's dropping defense. The, 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 he's locked in. How often do we see ball pressure in the NBA? Like you're saying, if you get the ball in the corner, there's no ball pressure for you to just dribble that bitch out to the top of the key from the corner. We not playing hard defensively. On the catch, I'm there. But if you bet not put it down, you better lock man. <laughs> you better not put it down. Like you better not. You better not. Pass it, and then he dribble back out. No, oh, how? No. You better lock his goofy ass down there, <laughs> catching that goddamn ball. Like, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I studied. That's what I studied. I studied how to score on defense. The best defense. Like, all right. If, like, you know, when like, okay, I get the ball right here. What, what are they doing? Okay, he's locking here. He's locking there. This guy's middle, so shit, the only moves I have is the fake here, he okay. just backs, then I gotta take off and then try to get back middle. Step like, back. There's, there's, or to step back into this little corner pocket. Mm -hmm. Like, there's only a few plays, and that's how you teach yourself. In real time, too. Yeah. You gotta assess, like, and as a trainer, I know how, why his frustration with Hakeem was, because it's like, you gotta be able to counter the counters in real time, especially mm -hmm. when you're training. So that's a frustrating part when you're seeing it, you're like, mm, he's not supposed to still be traveling. Right? So the same thing with defense. You're not supposed to um, adjust to the, the offense that I'm bringing to the table until I make you adjust. And so when you're out there and you're like, all right, I'm gonna turn this corner, I'm getting in this little pocket. Well, I know y'all ain't got nothing for this. We already, we already calculated one, two, three. You ain't got no counters for this. This is it. This is it. We're gonna win every time. Like, I, like even, even like this little concept for guards or guards wings, when you're driving, only time you change directions is once you see the inside shoulder. Mm. So if I'm driving, if I'm looking at this shoulder, right? If I'm driving, I'm looking at this shoulder, I do not change direction. Once I see this, that means he's in front of me. Oh, yeah. Er? Yep. Go the other way. Yep. You guys be ah, ah, ah. doing too like, much. He ain't even moved yet. You ain't, like, go keep going until he decides to cut you off once you see this shoulder now you make now you go in a different direction because there's no way he can try to cut you off and get back right like it's just a little simple things <coughs> we're allowing them to play bullshit defense when you Bo just yes. boom 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 they not playing no make him move you that's energy yes that's it he got a two two uh uh, uh turn yeah T nigga that shit that shit tough yeah. but if you're not making him move Offensively, like they're already like they're already changing directions before the defense even stopped them. Come on, like keep him on your hip until he decides to try to go full board. Now, once he gets in front of you, er, yep, counter. flying counter. <laughs> <laughs> now I can go hezzy gone like this. Everything it's, opens it, up. It's make it so it, you be, I be sitting there like he didn't even stop you yet. You stopped yourself, mm -hmm. and that be happening too all the time when you don't take that extra dribble. Yeah. You know, I, I, told my, up, I told up. my son because he's left-handed, right? My youngest one. And I said, if you want to make kids fall, <laughs> right, with your speed, just go hard. And when he try to get in front of you, behind the back. Like, so he just goes hard and, and just kids be dropping. He'd be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's all this like, and I, so like, simple. But this is, this is rule of thumb for anybody trying to score, right? Depending on you hard. If you're, if the guy is faster than you, don't play with the ball, yep. right? Because he's quicker and faster. Guys like that, straight line them. Yep. Which means you're faster than he is if, if he's moving backwards. It's, he can't get his speed like this, so that means once you go and now he has to turn to try to overbeat you, then he's he the changed. easiest person to yank. Just yep. keep going full and then yank. Yep. Now with the slow, long guy, that's the guys you can try to yank because they slow footed. Slow feet. Hey, you got to learn. Money. Like, <laughs> taller, slinkier, you can yank. Compact, faster, straight line. Yeah. Simple.
The more you know. Simple basketball. Simple basketball. 101. We don't need any more of your kids out here, Gil, terrorizing the valley. They need all to move too. We gonna lock him up too, hold him to 42 too. Damn. <laughs> hold him to 42 too. Locked up. Like he still be playing with Tavon, like, yo, stop playing. <laughs> we play Gil's son's team, so I see Gil all the way. I understand, but he's trying to coach. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I was like, yo, hey, hey, no, 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 this was funny. <laughs> like, he's, the, the guy, he's, he used to, they were teammates together, right? This is his star player. And I said, yo, even though he's smart, he still thinks he can block you, yep. right? Go hard, pump fake. Just, so Josiah see me do this. Watch out for the pump fake. <laughs> Watch the pump fakes. <laughs> Held him to 42. That's assistant coaching for that. He's going to pump fake. He's going to do it. For your coaches, you got to be perceptive of everything that's going on. Because yeah, 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 the yeah. kids are not paying attention. <laughs> but now it's time for some mostly fans. That's funny. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, no, good. Know, like, no, I look no. straight at the side. No, no, no. He's going to take his Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, Where's the oil, ladies? <laughs> I ain't got a pedicure in a few years, so I'm going to hold off on that. <laughs> so first question comes from Underdog, a username Ray.22. Which college basketball player, male or female, in the last 20 years would have made the most NIL money if it were legal? Skylar Diggins. Ooh. Mm. Shamika Holesclaw? What's Face. You got the face over there, right? Because you're Shamika, Shamika, Shamika. Shamika, was like the model type. Shamika, Shamika, though. She was and little Jordan. She was hooping. She was little Jordan. She had her little headband thing. She was the first college player to wear the little tennis headband. So this is 2003 on, the last 20 years. years man. Who in the last 20? Candace probably would have made a, a bag, too. Yeah, Candace for sure, for sure. But no, Skylar for you gotta sure. Yeah, remember, you got to be like, you got to be that type of personality, too, that just... Elena Beer. Who, who do we she's, got? She's quiet. Dude. No. She was quiet. And, no, and dude. bro. I feel that's like, what's no. It. Like, Flo J, look, Flo J makes 1.2 million. She averaged 10. Maya Moore for sure, though. Maya Moore. I feel like somebody from Kentucky. Uh, for, they for, break for, back for, for, on the men's boys, side. um... Oh, John Wall yeah. got a bag. John Wall. Mm, nah. From Kentucky? Yeah, they break bread. They've been doing NIL. You, what I'm saying is it has. <laughs> sure have. It DeJuan, has Wagner, DeJuan Wagner would have got a bag. Wait, it, Beyonce it, was getting it, bags it, already for keeping it real. You remember, Tyson a, Chandler would have got a bag. I mean, Zion got, I mean, his mama did have like a $1.5 or $1.7 million house. <laughs> but, that, but when we're talking about your name and how you. Pr Michael fucking Beasley. Michael Beasley. Ooh. Michael Beasley would have got a bag. He has the personality sure. look and the... the, the yeah, the, Mike would have been good. Like the, the, think about like when you're talking about sponsorship, you're talking about that personality that can talk, that can do this. He can sell, him, he can sell himself. Yeah. Like, like Mike. Yeah, I mean, like I'm Mike. just like Skylar, the way girls... I mean, I was one of them who started wearing them little headbands. Mm -hmm. She was gonna... She could have monetized the hell out of those. Made her own little headband line, everything. That's wild, the cultural impact, though, of seeing something like, like you talked about this earlier in the show, but just seeing somebody in the gym do something like Carrie Kittles back in the day with the one like, sock up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. Christian Leitner, Christian Leitner probably would have got a. He was moving headbands like crazy. Even like, let's say the Fat Five, right? Um, you have Chris Weber, you have Jalen Rowe. Maybe them two. Jawan Howard. He was quiet. Quiet. The doctor. They were, well, you they were a me? unit, the though. But, but I'm saying that's what you, like. Like I'm, I'm giving you this, what you you ain't got you ain't got no voice. The doctor. Like you got to think mean, about they, even they Mark. Were, they were think stronger about, together. But think about that's what I'm saying. Think about when they got to the NBA. Remember, marketing is still marketing. Those guys wasn't marketing because they weren't, they weren't the. Right. They would have gave Hansbro a bag. They would. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what the commercial. I don't know what the commercial would have looked like though. I'm just being real. I don't know what the commercial would have looked. Tell Hansbro. Some Snoop cereal. Mmm. Who, who's really... Jimmer. Jimmer for hours. Oh, my God, I was thinking the same day. Jimmer, Jimmer would have got a bag. Jimmer. Jimmer, <laughs> Jimmer would have got a bag. Jimmer had it. Wow, yeah, I mean, Jimmer would have had some black... He wow. probably had some black barbecue types. Like, the way he was playing. Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Jimmer yeah, that had was had crazy. Flame, he had a crazy run in college. So our next uh, question is from underdog username, Necessary. That's a good one. Necessary. Simple, but you got it. Uh, should All-Star Weekend always be in Vegas? We're looking at the, and we're talking about the, the men's game because the women already do it out there, but uh, the next two destinations, you got Indianapolis. Trash. 
cold. Convenient. It's I'm cold. just saying, Central located. Think they should ever do all star games Pink in cold, cold city. city. And, and yeah, I, I, I think cold city, Pink I think, cold city. I think because they're trying to change the economy, I think they keep putting them in these cold. Like no, no, fuck these cold cities, right? And, and like, no, like this cold. is like this. NBA games, West Coast, right? WNBA NBA games East Coast because they play in the summer. So, yeah, going on to the East. <laughs> Go, yeah, because it's warm. It's day. warmer. Going over there in the warm. Right? But for the NBA, like, most of your fan base, you're not getting because of the weather. So here's my thing with, with the All-Star game. There's no knock to the smaller Midwestern cities, but the one in Cleveland was trash and trash. shit. No Ubers. Couldn't get around. Airport. Leaving out that bitch. One of the jankiest shits ever. Shout out Clear for getting me through. Cold. Did you say cold? Oh, cold. <laughs> cold as shit. Ears cold Did you say cold? Did you say cold? <laughs> like the ear freeze is like when you know. Off. How was last year's in Salt Lake City? Salt Lake City. Was it okay? Must, musty air. Was it bad? Like, I don't know. Musty. Black people didn't go there? They let us, they let us pour they, up, though. They got hey, rid man, of like listen. I'm, 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 they should get rid of the Utah Jazz should change. Your name is Jazz. Jazz. Music. Black. <laughs> From New Orleans, though, yes. right? Yeah, you went to Utah. Huh? Where the jazz at? Where, <laughs> where is the jazz? Where the jazz at? Where the jazz at? <laughs> like, where is come the jazz? on, y'all! Ah, oh, damn! Switch it. He said we got the Lakers here. We got a few lakes. Uh, Lake Crenshaw. Uh, no, I'm just... no Mormon Citas or some. <laughs> where is that? Where is that this year? Uh, so this year is in Indianapolis. The following year is in San Francisco. San Francisco. San Fran. Oh, that's gonna be horrible. That's gonna be expensive. Because Niggas is gonna get robbed because it's in San Francisco. San Francisco streets are small, right? I think I think just at Chase, but they'll probably them Uber prices are gonna be outrageous. Oh my God, Uber and coffee. Uber and coffee. <laughs> gonna be hot. Jimmy by Jimmy Butler by Mc killing out there. Cool. Hey, a lot of y'all going out to San Francisco gonna be a walking lick. Might as well not even rent a car. Don't bring no valuable shit with you. Damn. You're getting robbed. Do you I'm think just, that I'm awesome. just telling you. Man. Be positive, bro. Bro, the smash and dash, that shit is... Wait, I'll do you think they should... Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Should they keep... They put All-Star Weekend in one city and just leave it? Or you nah, like that, the fact that, that, that it moves around? That's what the... That that is, no, no, no. That should we do it in Las Vegas? Vegas. No, that'd just be... Just Las Vegas. That'd be, that'd be bad for just the... Why? Because when it becomes po political and stuff be like boring. that... It's, it is, Let's knock all that shit out of here right like now. My, like, my, like, if you're going to do it in cities, do it in cities that don't have basketball. Right, like um, Vegas. Yeah, you can do like Vegas. Go until they get a team. Vegas, you can do Tampa, Florida. Ooh. Um, a lot of shaking going on in Tampa. What are you going to do? Tampa, Florida. You can do... You can do yeah, like non-NBA cities. Yeah, non-NBA cities, which forces everybody cool. to come there with, if you want With indoor Vegas. football That's stadiums. But it's hard because it's That's easy to do All-Star when you have a arena, an NBA arena. Just San Diego. Right San Diego. Just do it at SoFi. Vegas is entertainment capital. You got all kind of shit there. Vegas? Now, why wouldn't you do it in Vegas yeah. every year? You monetize on top of everything you're doing. And that's the thing about it. We'll see how Super Bowl plays out this year out there, but Vegas, like, they just be laughing when them, the, them crowds come in. Like, this ain't even a big deal. That's it's, why it's you do it. Exactly. That's the exact so, so they don't, you don't have to really, it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all think we got yeah, a right. dentist they're convention they're coming they're through. Like they're built for it. Yeah, we're ready for it every time. I like, I, that's what I love about Vegas during those times because it's, it's a variety of shit to do. You ain't got to just totally easy to but, 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 you know, like, when you're, a, when you're an owner, right, you're, you're relying on that money. <coughs> so, yeah. You know, when you're an owner, you just Well, you can still have, like, a host team yes. not in their city. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I don't know if how the that would city. work. It but. would be the closest city, which would be L.A., the Clippers and the, and the Lakers hosting. Just make it places. You can't make it places that don't have direct flights. Like, Cleveland only has one direct flight from L.A., Indy only one. Oh, that's you know what I'm trash. saying? Like you need, you need. I said, so you. I know. I understand. You want to keep the the wealth going around, but life ain't fair. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all are billionaires, so you know what I mean. <laughs> y'all are billionaires. Yeah, the NBA. Listen, the NBA players don't get paid the same. Sh neither do y'all, right? Right. But Indy's gonna be decent. We will be out there. Hopefully, an underdog cuts the check. We are negotiating with them as we speak. Yeah, you're not trying to get to Indy. <laughs> You get some fits off. Nah, I mean, I, I, I'd probably go to Indy. Get some cold weather the Concord. fits. It's the only goddamn hotel they got, so the whole, everybody black gonna be there. <laughs> got a Concord. Uh, black or, Super Bowl, as we call it. Or the It's just too... <laughs> Everything Century located downtown. Snow. They should probably do it in the, uh, what, Lucas Oil, whatever it's called now. Snow the Coast Stadium. Heaven, boy, snow money heaven, boy. I tried to tell you, boy.
Same tree located. Did you just say snow bunny heaven? Snow bunny Because there's going to be snowing out there, and then there's a lot of bunnies. Snow bunny heaven. Mm -hmm. That's why? <laughs> I, okay. I, I, I thought I had something better than that. <laughs> yeah, you know it is no better. This was major work. It's work day. That's a work day. I will be there on the calendar. <laughs> yeah, put it on the calendar. We working. Before we wrap the show, whoever in the chat called me Josiah Pinkett Smith, you ain't shit. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. But God damn it, it was timely. So what the fuck? Oh, they go hard. Wait, Nat, what's closer? What's closer? Chicago's closer there too, huh? In Minnesota, yeah. yeah. Minnesota, Chicago, oh, yeah, Chicago I, you can drive. They can, they can be. That would be a lot. It was cold. That was cold. It was really cold. Cold as hell. Cold as fuck. Really cold. The cold puts you in like, a bad mood. How's how how Atlanta? Still cold. It's pretty warmer than the other places, but but cold. cold. Like there should be like three destinations. Like you know what I mean? Like it'd be like Tampa or Tampa or Miami. Atlanta. It's like Super Bowl then, destination. Yeah, Atlanta. Then, then you got like Vegas, LA. And they just rotate. And then probably Texas. Yeah, but you can go to Cowboys Houston? Stadium. Houston? You can go Houston. Houston's uh, indoor, I know. They, they football. Oh, no, they, they can accommodate. You know, right? So it's a, it should be like six cities that you just you keep rotating to. Just like the fucking NFL does. It's not complex. We don't need to. Be oh, only, NFL on the. Yeah, they don't. NFL, we go into like five. They don't go to. Uh, they don't go to. Uh, Occasionally, Ohio? Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I did New York one time. Did New York, Minnesota, but like those are like specialty. Like we're giving you Minnesota's Tampa, Miami. Minnesota's still a big city, though. It's still a big yeah. city. But it's yeah, cold. no, but with a, a, a great ass new arena, like. God, it's cold. But it's cold as shit. But hold on, man. Shout out to Steph, bro. Can I shout out oh, to Steph for the? Please do. For the tough crowd, boys. You know what I'm saying, get me ready for this shootout. They look comfy. Yeah, man. Hey, anyway. you been practicing? Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. I'm going to start practicing next week. Oh. So are you going to shoot with a regular ball? Yes. I will shoot with my basketball. Not y'all's. WNBA? Yes. Okay, so you're going to shoot with your ball. Yeah. That's a regular ball. That's a regular ball to me. Hmm. Hmm. But nonetheless... Is that not fair? No, that's fair. No, that's fair. I feel like that's the fairest it can be. <laughs> Is that fair? Yeah. Is it? I shoot with mine, you shoot with yours. You get to shoot where we shoot from, too? Yeah. yeah that's not a problem. High school three. <laughs> we shoot from the high school three? Most likely. Damn. All right, everybody, everybody in the chat. Not, you can't, you I got can't. a downgrade. You know, you, I, I got to go downgrade. I, you can't do, I got you, a downgrade. Yeah, you can't do the NBA, you can't do the NBA three because the, every, the majority of the field ain't an NBA Three-point player. That's why I said. So you gonna shoot what we shoot? You better make them accommodate y'all. Yeah. Nah. Are you gonna shoot what we shoot? Or what? what you know? yeah, I, can, I, I can shoot one-handed. <laughs> I shoot yeah. five-footer. I, I shoot hey, five Lex, yeah. you, you look like you struggling over there. Damn, Lex. <laughs> Jeez. I can shoot NBA threes. All right. Nah, but it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be college. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be high school. High school or college. So yeah. everybody in the chat's getting on us about complaining about cold weather. We're in LA right now. It's about seventy-seven degrees. Got shorts solid. on. In the in December, we'll hit a, a heat mm -hmm. wave about 85, 90. We're not, we don't do the same things y'all do over there. Mm -mm. That's why y'all move life. out here. But when that's, what we, oh, that's what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the uh, oh the Gills Arena shootout um, that's going on. We just 100,000 for the winter. And it's coming. More, yeah, the, the, the info's coming, but yeah. Part um, two, part two. I think, I think December is when they're going to have the open tryout. And then January, like January 20th, is when the actual contest. So they have, they have some time to practice. And y'all out there have a chance. If your jumper is wet to win $100,000, there'll be more info coming soon. But you know Underdog takes care of you. Gil takes care of you. This has been another episode of Gil's Arena presented by Underdog <laughs> Fantasy. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we will see y'all tomorrow.